Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and we warmly welcome you to this flagship conference of CMA Sri Lanka Student Guild. Before we commence the proceedings for the day, let us all raise for the national anthem of Sri Lanka and the anthem of CMA Sri Lanka. dignitaries, please be seated. This is the third time CSG, as it's called, is organizing this student's conference and we are happy to conduct it this time virtually with the participation of renowned international speakers and with the participation of the local and international professional students. CMA Sri Lanka Student Guild is the student body of CMA Sri Lanka, the national professional management accounting body in Sri Lanka incorporated by an act of parliament in year 2009. CMA students have been able to demonstrate the integration and application of technical knowledge, professional skills and professional values, ethics and attitudes in their working life. It is also necessary for professional students to develop, update, and maintain their professional competencies by engaging in webinars such as this. We take this opportunity to commend your interest and enthusiasm even during this troubled time, which should undoubtedly result in you receiving nothing but the best. While we continue to hope the speedy recovery of the entire world from the COVID-19 pandemic, let's take a maximum use out of the ample time available to us and experience the silver lining on the dark cloud. To start the proceedings today, now we would like to invite Mr. Rashan Panamperuma, the president of the CMA Student Guild and the winner of the South Asian quiz competition held in year 2019 to welcome the audience. Thank you, Ashini. Uh, Mr. Delva Hussain, President of the South Asian Federation of Accountants and our chief guest of this event, Professor Lakshman R. Vatavada, founder president of CMA Sri Lanka. Mr. Hennai Gavantara, Vice President of CMA Sri Lanka and the Vice President of the South Asian Federation of Accountants. Professor Ho Yuki, the keynote speaker of this session. Presidents and vice presidents and representatives of the SAFA bodies representing Sri Lanka, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal, Maldives, Bhutan, and Afghanistan. Distinguished guest speakers, invitees, fellow students, and my dear ladies and gentlemen. I would like to take this great opportunity to thank each and every one of you for being here today and with great pleasure, I would like to warmly welcome all of you 
to the CFMA Sri Lanka International Student Conference 2021. And also, I would like to give a special thanks to all the representatives of the Zafa body and the distinguished guests for accepting our invitation. Before we get started, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to all of those who generously supported to make this event happen, where Professor Lashmanar Bhattavala, the founding president of CMA Sri Lanka, guided and led us from the very beginning till now. My dear ladies and gentlemen, this is the third student conference organized by the CFA Students Guild. And as the president of the Students Guild, I am proud to see that we have evolved from physical conference conferences to a globalized, digitalized conference by conducting this event today in a virtual platform. CMA Students Guild have conducted various types of events to enhance the quality of the students not only professionally, but also organizing various so social events and activities. In this great event today, the experts in different fields will be sharing a massive amount of knowledge with you with the intention of building a better future for accounting professionals, which is also the theme of this International Student Conference. This conference will be carried out for two days, uh, today and tomorrow with four hour sessions on each day. The event will consist of five sessions, including two, two inaugural sessions, where each session will consist of a main speech on a selected topic relating to our profession, profession and career, which is followed by a panel discussion. The speeches on the given topics are given by the experts of the particular subject, hence I'm sure you will gain a massive knowledge from them. During the panel discussion, it will be a complete different experience to all of you, where the representatives of the SAFA bodies will get the opportunity to share their valuable thoughts, ideas, and knowledge from their different aspects, which is relating to the topic on which the speaker spoke. I hope you might have got a brief idea on this event. Hence, without wasting much of your valuable time, it is best to hear from our guest speakers. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and I hope you will enjoy this event while making it a success. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Rashan, for your opening remarks and for the welcoming audience on behalf of the Student Guild. Now, we would like to invite Professor Lakshman R. Watawala, the founder president of CMA Sri Lanka, the past president of CS Sri Lanka, past president, South Asian Federation of Accountants, founder president of AAT Sri Lanka, a proud receiver of national honors, Sri Lanka Sikamani, and a fatherly figure in accounting profession to welcome the distinguished gathering on behalf of CMA Sri Lanka. He is a former chairman of the Board of Investment of Sri Lanka and the People's Bank, and currently the deputy chairman of Castellano Silons PLC, director of Lake House Printers and Publishers PLC, and Lanka IOC PLC. Professor Lakshmanar Watawala, the mastermind behind all endeavors of CMA Sri Lanka, we urge to hear a few words from you. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Isuru. Uh, my uh, dear good friend, the uh, president of uh, SAFA, uh, Mr. AKM Delva Hussein, I warmly welcome you on behalf of uh, our council and all our uh, students who are gathered here in large numbers. Our keynote uh, speaker, Professor Ho Yu Ki, who is also a member of our advisory council and also the chairman of the academic advisory board. So he is a very, very important person and I warmly welcome you because you have never refused uh, uh, our invitations and today especially uh, to address the students. I know that uh, you have been really playing a very major role uh, with CMA. Then, of course, we have our Vice President and, of course, Vice President of SAFA, Mr. Hennaga Bandar, uh, Mr. Ruchira Perra, who is the Chairman of this uh, conference committee, the Council members of CMA. Then we have the distinguished uh, uh, invitees from our member bodies in the SAFA region, uh, I can see Ms. our past president uh, from uh, Cost Accountants, Mr. Balwinder Singh, 
and uh, of course from Maldives. Then we have Mr. Manuel Jasinghe, uh, President of uh, CA Sri Lanka, and many of the other uh, top dignitaries uh, representing the South Asian region uh, at this International Students Conference 2021. Uh, my dear students, uh, we are very, very happy that we've been able to organize uh, this conference. As you know, it's a time uh, which all of you feel that uh, maybe uh, we are undergoing a lot of uh, difficulties with the COVID-19 pandemic. But you should know that uh, uh, accountants and uh, those who budding accountants are those people who take up challenges. So we are really ready here. We have taken up the challenge uh, to see that we do better than what we did earlier. Now, the digital connect is something that has really changed all our lives. Today, uh, most of the, our foreign dignitaries, all our speakers will tell you as to how uh, this has really helped us. And this is a very good lesson for all our students. Because we also want to show them that things are normal. Uh, even in difficulties, we are able to face up to these challenges. So that's why we need professionals. So you will know that there is a very big demand uh, for all of you, because if you are a professional, you will be able to withstand, come up with new ideas, uh, new challenges uh, that will come across would all be met. And today, our conference uh, with the digital means has made it a global conference. All our countries in the South Asian region are connected as a result of the digitalization. Normally, we would have asked everyone to come. You can also know as uh, people who are looking after the finances that the cost is very, very important. So we have also had a heavy saving for all our uh, foreign participants, even for our local participants who can now listen to this uh, from their home. So it's uh, a big revolution that has taken place. So we need to see how we can adjust ourselves in this big revolution that has taken place, and I'm sure our keynote speaker, our president of SAFA, and also all the sessions would be able to tell you. Because you know now some of the, the first one, of course, the panel discussion is on the, your skills, your future accounting education, new imperatives, which I'm sure Professor Ho will uh, be able to uh, give you one of the most excellent presentations that you heard. But the, the panel discussion, we have the leaders of the different countries who will be able to tell what they have done uh, in those countries. Then. Thereafter, we have digitalization. What has really taken place? Today, the students, as I said, are living in a digital world. Their education is digital. Their uh, examinations are digitalized. So they are all uh, doing this. Although we are under lockdown, we are able to communicate. We are able to conduct normal things as a result of this digitalization. So that's uh, something that's very important. Then, of course, on the second day, uh, the uh, a most important thing of the sustainability development goals. So that's uh, uh, something that uh, which has been signed, an agreement signed with the UN uh, by over 130 countries, uh, which will enable if uh, uh, properly practiced as professionals, we need to ensure that these sub uh, uh, SDGs or sustainability development goals are practiced in our country. So the students uh, should be aware as to what is there in that. So we have very, very important speakers who will speak to them. And even in your career progression, where there'll be a keynote address on the career progression. And then of course, the students uh, themselves taking part uh, in the final session. So that's uh, really a great, great uh, uh, conference that we are organizing. I must uh, thank all of them because they, they have been really working very hard during a very short period uh, to uh, do this. So today, uh, as you know, uh, CMA or the uh, Institute of uh, Certified Management <coughs> Accountants of Sri Lanka. It's a, a body that is incorporated by Act of Parliament, recognized by the government. And today, most of the problems uh, that are faced in the countries, because most of them are facing maybe problems in their exports, in their foreign exchange. Uh, we have uh, problems of uh, debt management. All these are all connected with the accounting field. Either it's financial accounting or management accounting or cost management which are really essential to put one's country in order. So we need to play a very, very prominent role. We need to come forward and give all these uh, ideas and suggestions uh, to the uh, governments of the various countries if we are really to take it forward. Then also we have contributed a great deal for the SME sector or the small and medium enterprises sector, which is really a very major sector in this. 
and today the students can be happy that they have a opportunity to finish their education and become professionally qualified accountants in by when they are 21 they don't have to waste any time uh, do our professional exams we will somehow say that you are there and then thereafter you will be able to get a job and be on the top of the career ladder so these are the things that we are going to uh, bring to your light uh, during this conference and once again uh, while uh, welcoming our SAFA president. Uh, it's a big, great honor for us because I know that uh, very recently he celebrated the Founders Day. And uh, of course, I am happy that uh, I have been uh, one of the signatories to the formation of SAFA uh, when I was the president of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Sri Lanka. At that time, we had only, we had uh, the India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, all meeting in Delhi, all had two accounting bodies. Sri Lanka, I was a single man. Then I thought at that time, uh, we also have to follow them and have the second body. And that was uh, when we set up uh, the uh, our CMA 21 years ago. So I think it's an uh, achievement. Uh, I must say that uh, there is no competition between us because we are all catering uh, to the benefit and uh, the good of uh, the economy of our country. So we all have to work together. We all have to contribute. We have to show the full strength of professionals. And as the students who are present here, you need to really understand that because you are coming into a great profession. You are going to be inculcated with the values, ethics, integrity. These are very, very important values. And of course, the most important thing, we give you the ability to communicate and be leaders in our uh, uh, accountancy provision. So these are some things that we have done. I'm sure that these will all benefit our students and that you all will all be able to go right to the top. And today the, uh, the wow. leaders in the accountancy profession will speak to you and tell you how you can come to that. So thank you very much and wish you all the very best. That was Professor Lakshman R. Watavalan, the founder president CMA Sri Lanka. All credits to you, sir, and congratulations for a well-organized student conference today. Now, we are proudly presenting you the annual CMA Sri Lanka student newsletter.
Now, we have the honor of listening to Mr. Dilwa Hussain, the president of South Asian Federation of Accountants and a past president and a council member of Institute of Cost and Management Accountants of Bangladesh. Mr. Hussain is the principal and CEO of AKM Delva Hussain and Associates. He is currently a director of Agrani Equity and Investment Limited. Mr. Hussain has acted as chairman of a state-owned corporation, namely Bangladesh Sugar and Food Industries Corporation from 2014 to 2019. South Asian Federation of Accountants. A network partner of IFAC comprises of 11 accountancy bodies in South Asian region, namely Sri Lanka, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal, Maldives, and Afghanistan. Bhutan, where no accountancy body exists, has been given an observer status. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, your name is Archina Vintage. Thank you very much for giving me the floor. Vishnullah uh, Ramane, respected chair of the session, our very respected and chair president of the Institute of Chart called CNS Sri Lanka, former president of Safa, uh, Lakshman Othala sir and my today's vice president Safa, your institute representative, and my friend from India, first president of Institute of Cost and Management Account, India president, Balvinder Singh, and very good friend of mine, very handsome, uh, chairman of the Student Affairs Committee, Mr. Ruchira, and my other Safa member bodies, president, and my beloved students of South Asian uh, country region, and my greetings and good wishes to the students from Sri Lanka and other Safa countries. Assalamu alaikum. I wish to thank the president of CMS Sri Lanka, Professor Lakshman Arwatawala sir, for inviting me as the chief guest of the CMS Sri Lanka International Student Conference, attended by students from Sri Lanka and the Safa member bodies. At, at a time when the world is affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, the conduct of the International Student Conference is indeed a great achievement of Sri Lanka, which is also an active member of SAFA and currently holding the position of vice president of SAFA and represented by CMS Sri Lanka, Mr. Hanaike Bandra. I must make special mention of Professor Lakshman Arwatawala sir, founder signatory to the information of SAFA on 22nd August 1984, <clears throat> which was celebrated by us on August 22nd, 2021, where ICMAB hosted the Safa Founders Day celebration. And Professor Lakshman Othola sir also present. And it was a proud moment for all of us. The theme of the conference, building a better future for accounting professionals is an ideal topic for our students in the Safa region. And the keynote address on the future skill and new imperatives in accounting education, followed by topics on digitalization and the impact on the accounting profession, sustainable development goals 2030, and the role of the professional accountant and work-life balance of students and professional who will add great value to the entire student population. Safa too have been affected by the current pandemic, but have marched aid with all countries switching to the digital education and digital examinations and overtaking some of the traditional modes of learning. Safa and its <clears throat> and member bodies have conducted 
many webinars which have provided a boost to the continuing professional development of our members. Today, we need to provide digital connectivity to all students at this will be the new mood of education. Digital, digitalization has no boundaries and all our SAFA countries are now connected and much stronger than we were earlier. In the global economy, South Asia is growth center and hence we need to produce quality accountants with the new imperatives to reach the top. They should not only the academically brilliant, but add with the practical experience, communication and leadership skills, high integrity and it is will build the top professional accountants for the future. The economics, economies of all countries are affected as a result of the COVID pandemic and hence financial and cost and management accounting are of great importance of, to all countries. The export revenue and expenditure need to come under strict scrutiny. This could only be carried out by the professional chartered and cost and management accountants and both the private and government sector will need them in large numbers. Also, Amnesty International have recently carried out a survey of different countries and they have found that the countries where the government employed more professional accountants, the corruption rate was lower than the others who had not given much prominence to this fact. The conference is aimed at building the skill of the future accountants. And I'm confident all these, those who are attending that international conference would greatly benefit, would be benefited. The time is excellent as this will give a moral booster to all students and inform them to the importance of the digitalization and the change has brought to the, their lives. CMA Sri Lanka are future oriented and I wish to congratulate the chairman of the conference committee, Mr. Ruchira, the CMA Sri Lanka Students Guild and the staff members of CMA Sri Lanka for their untiring efforts in putting together such an excellent conference. This has also strengthened the close relationship of SAFA member bodies and brought together students from the SAFA countries, enriching their skills and more importantly, enabling the networking among the students. I wish the CMS Sri Lanka International Student Conference all success and I'm confident that the comradeship they have created by bringing all the students from SAFA countries under one roof will grow from strength to strength. Thank you and stay safe. And thank you very much, Watawala sir and uh, my uh, professional colleagues, CMA Sri Lanka and other colleagues also uh, give the opportunity to say something in this program. Uh, again, highest regards to pay to the Watawala sir and other and for his uh, guardianship to the South Asian professional accountancy arena. Really, uh, I always wish and not only we should pray for him for his long life and to serve the accounting profession whole region, particularly South Asian region. Sir, thank you very much for giving the opportunity to say a few words in your esteemed uh, institute, uh, Sri Lanka. You are a patron of the accounting profession. Thank you very much and other members and my dear beloved students, pray for me uh, so that I can contribute a bit, a little bit to the accounting profession, particularly CMA profession. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for bracing this occasion. Just one word. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Delva Hussein, president of SAFA. We greatly appreciate the very, very uh, kind comments that you made. And we are there to work with you and to bring SAFA and the uh, Bangladesh uh, management accounting body to the highest levels. Thank you and all the best. Thank you, sir.
Thank you for raising this occasion and for your kind message on behalf of the South Asian Federation of Accountants for the success of our conference. We take pleasure in inviting now our keynote speaker for the day, Professor Ho Yu Ki, a professor of accounting, associate provost, and concurrently cluster director, design and specialized business of Singapore Institute of Technology. Professor Ho obtained his accountancy education from Monash University, Australia, and PhD from Carnegie Mellon University, USA. Professionally, he is a fellow member of CPA Australia, a fellow member of Chartered Accountant Singapore, and a Chartered Financial Analysis CFA. He is also a fellow of the Singapore Institute of Director. Professor Ho is currently a director of a listed insurance company and serves on the board of National Kidney Foundation, St. Luke's Elder Care, Prison Fellowship, Singapore, amongst others. He is also a member and advisory council of Institute of Certified Management Accountants, Sri Lanka, and Deakin University Integrated Reporting Center, Australia, and council member of CPA Australia, Singapore Division. Dear sir, we now respectfully invite you to make the keynote speech. We would like to remind the audience that there will be a panel discussion based on the keynote speech involving the presidents of all institutes and request you to send any questions that your moderators will answer, will need to answer later. So you can use the chat box or the question and answer chat box to raise your questions. Over to you, sir. Professor, you are muted, I think. Professor, you, you are muted. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, is this in the presentation mode? Yes, yeah, right. Yes, yeah, right. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, Professor, uh, uh, President uh, CMA Sri Lanka, Professor Lashman Watawala, President uh, Safa, President ICA Cause India, President ICMA Pakistan, President CA Sri Lanka. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for giving me this tremendous privilege to share with you my limited understanding All right, uh, in this space. Uh, if you compare myself with all the presidents of which I've just mentioned, I'm probably like a small child right, compared to their stature and their experience. So allow me in this half an hour to share with you something that is uh, that's part of my job every day as an associate provost, skills future. So and the title for today's talk is Your Skills, Your Future, Accounting Education, New Imperatives. So what I'd like to do, uh, right, sorry, let me give me. Okay. All right. So the agenda for today is I want to share with you the enlargement of the knowledge of space and education as I often joke that when I went to schools at the universities in the 80s, there were only 11 accounting standards, 250 pages. Today we have more than 40 accounting standards, which captures about 1,500 pages plus another 1,500 pages of guidance notes, yet the accounting education is still about three years. So the space has grown significantly. What are we to do? I want to look at also the future of work in which the technical skills are always assumed. The third thing I want to look at are the importance of soft skills. The fourth thing, the importance of digital skills. And then finally, I want to provide you all with some food for thought. Let me start off with the expansion of the knowledge and content space. On your left is the issues in financial accounting in its third edition. This was the 1984 edition in which I use as a student. There were only 20 chapters, 865 pages, written by my professor, the late professor Graham Pearson, and it ends with AAS 14. And this is the edition after the 16th edition in 2017 with 26 chapters, more than 1,003 pages, and the new areas covered include agricultural activities, insurance, IASB, related parties, so on and so forth. This is a simple representation of the expansion of the knowledge space just in financial accounting alone. We have not included the audit, taxation, management accounting, so on and so forth. 
So the traditional professional education, we use what we so-call the pillar approach, where we drill our people and train them well through the technically entrenched and deep uh, skilling. We look at the core accounting issues covering financial accounting or the management accounting, tax valuation, and so on and so forth. But in recent years, the professional education has changed in the sense of trading professional. We have power on top of it, the pillar with a top horizontal bar called the soft skills. We suddenly realize that not only must the people be technically competent, they must have the necessary soft skills which cover communication, listening, negotiation, persuasion, presentation, public speaking, reading body language, storytelling, writing. If you look at the many successful individuals that you admire, or look at the precedents that I've just mentioned, you realize that not only are they technically competent, but when you work with them, when you talk to them, you feel the sense of warmness. You, send, you feel the sense of their capability in terms of conveying their soft skills. They were able basically to persuade, negotiate. They were able to make a difficult situation much easier. They were able to strike deals that are win-win, right? So in a sense, that the current professional education adds an, another dimension in terms of soft skills. However, we have found recently that unfortunately, this is not enough. The new professional education requires another bottom bar, which I call the I-shape approach education. And this is unfortunately or fortunately the digital skills. In the recent lockdown that we have in COVID-19, all of us realize that if there are, there are no cloud computing, if there's no Zoom, the world that we know will probably be at a standstill. The digital skills has enabled life to carry on despite the lockdown. Digital skills has allowed knowledge to be propagated, even for this conference to be made possible. So the new professional education must include not only the technical competency, but also the soft skills and the digital skills, which I call the I-shaped approach in education. Let me give you a simple example, training a professional. So this, in terms of the soft skills, the technical skills and the digital skills, if you look at the areas that I've listed, ladies and gentlemen, this is the CMA syllabus of the, uh, this is a syllabus of CMA Sri Lanka, right? This was a syllabus crafted a few years ago that takes into consideration. I remember I said on one of the uh, members who advised the creation of this uh, syllabus or revision of this syllabus, you realize that these syllabus fit exactly what I've suggested earlier concerning the I-shaped education. The soft skills are covered by the business English one and two, the professional communication. The technical skills cover all the entrenched topic covering from management accounting to financial accounting to law to management and to uh, so-called uh, 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 strategic planning as it is, right? And then we bundle in the digital skills, information technology applications, computer-based accounting, and we wrap up the entire program with an integrative case study. Going forward, we will have to further tinker with this model because we will need to power in additional things, particularly in strengthening the digital, digital skills space. We have very structured technical knowledge, but we know that the technical knowledge and skills today alone is not sufficient. We need the soft and the digital skills. So let me quickly recap. In the structure that we have, Technical skills and competencies are always assumed, but what will make you successful are the two additional horizontal bar, the top bar being the soft skills and the bottom bar being the digital skills. With this, let me scope for you what the future of work look like. So this is a study done basically a World Economic Forum 2020, where it basically says 50% of all employees will need reskilling by 2025. 40% of current workers' core skills are expected to change in the next five years. So given these projections and statistics, we ask ourselves these questions. How are we to create a workforce which is able to fulfill the needs of the future of work? What are the key competencies needed for future works? And what are these future jobs to start with? And of course, 
the one of the most important things that we have to deal with will be how can I prepare for these future jobs? Uh, in the same study, World Economic Forum, Future of Jobs Survey 2020, this was a survey done for, uh, by, on companies when we asked them, what are the share of tasks performed by humans versus machine 2020 and 2025, which is their future projection. And you realize one of the, the, the bars concerning human, uh, uh, con uh, concerning machines continue to shift and move further and further away from the red bar to the black bar. For, for example, in terms of information and data processing, currently 57% of the work are done by machines. Come 2025, 66% of them will be undertaken by machines, right? Interestingly, in terms of communication and interacting, and in terms of reasoning and decision-making and coordinating, developing, managing, and advising, these are pure human skills in which human always have an advantage, although the machines will be chipping away. So all is not lost in the sense that we have to major on what we are best in as humans so as to contain the rise of the machines and the rise of technology. So let's push this forward. What are the attributes of the future job? I would like to do a crystal ball gazing and suggest the future jobs looks like this. There are significant need for digital skills. You cannot run away from having automation, artificial intelligence, connectivity in terms of internet of things, digital uh, information and big data. You cannot run away from future jobs without having these digital skills. But yet I want to encourage every one of us in the sense that machines will not conquer the world, all right, uh, uh, like the Terminator, but human creativity, our soft skills, our accounting, finance, technical judgments and skills ultimately will bring us the value and the relevance of our employment as it is, all right? There's something to be afraid of, and yet there's also nothing to be afraid of because as human beings, we are uniquely creative. We are uniquely resilient. In order to be successful, we will have to work on our digital skills and we have to work on whatever that is uniquely human. I'll touch on that later on, don't you worry, all right? So this is how the multi-skill professional look like. We call this the T professional model as it is. A T professional, more, a T professional has an attractive diversity of capabilities a deep understanding of one discipline, be it accounting, finance, law, what have you, and one industry. But he doesn't stay within that one discipline nor that one industry. He has also, we long the, uh, with the ability to work across many complex and subjective uh, subject areas as it is, right? So in a sense, you can think of the top T bar, that he's a generalist. He understands the boundary crossing competencies, he knows something about uh, digital. He knows something about human resource. He knows something about marketing. He knows something about finance and accounting, but yet he's a deep specialist, deep specialist in at least one discipline or at least one system, right? So this is what we are, what the new T professional will look like, right? A multidiscipline person, but yet with deep specializations. See, you think about it, we are almost describing a Nobel laureate. If you look at the Nobel laureate, they are always given the Nobel Prize for a deep specialist, a uh, deep specialization. But when you talk to them, you'll find that they are actually people of multidiscipline and multi interest and, and broad so called knowledge space, that they have that broad generalist knowing what is happening in the world, but yet they are entrenched economists, chemists, or what have you for that matter. Right? So this is the T professional model. Then what are the attributes of a successful professional? So in the building a common language for skills at work, a global taxonomy, again, by the economic, World Economic Forum 2021, a very nice report to read where you try to build a taxonomy of what skills, how do we define skills? How do we have a common language concerning what are the relevant skills? It defined for us, Competencies primarily 
arises from having the ability to have skills and knowledge, the attitudes, and then the abilities. Where skills and knowledge are defined, where skills are defined as the capabilities needed to complete a task and therefore a job. And knowledge is the body of facts, principles, and theories that are related to a field of work or study. Think about it as the accounting world, where you need to know the accounting standards. You need to know the cost management accounting theory. Right? You have the skill to be able to balance the book. You have the skill to be able to craft a financial statement. You have the skill to craft a technical report. However, there's only one attribute in terms of being a successful professional. The second dimension will be the attitudes, the learned behaviors, the emotional intelligence traits and beliefs that individuals exhibit that influence their approach to ideas, persons, and situations. You want to be successful, you must not only to you must not only be technically competent, you must have the ability to persuade the people. You must have the ability to bring the people alongside so that they are able to share the decision with you in order to make a project successful or to be able to cooperate to get a task done ultimately. This report was also very uh, cognizant of the fact that human beings, all of us, have different abilities. The possession of the different aspects of physical, psycho, motor, cognitive, and sensory means to perform a job. That means some of us are mathematically inclined. Some of us are artistic. Some of them, by definition, are slower physically and what have you, right? So in that sense, that we need to combine these three spaces together, the knowledge and skills, the attitudes and the abilities, combine them together to allows us to have these competencies, which is the collection of skills, knowledge, attitudes, and abilities that enable an individual to perform job roles well. So for example, in Singapore, we started to do what is so-called work and uh, uh, career counseling early for our students, because we want our students to discover who they are. What are they good in, in terms of their, uh, of their abilities, right? If people who are not good academically, we don't have to push them down into the academic uh, tracks, tricks, uh, tracks as it is. If they're good in their hands, they are good in their music, the artistic part, we allow them to develop with the skills and knowledge, which is affiliated to their abilities. But the most important thing that we need to do with them is that we need to cultivate their attitudes the learned behaviors that allow them to be successful over time. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the future attributes of a successful professional. So let me move on and say, let me tackle the two other areas. The crucial question for professionals in the, in the dimension of soft and digital skills are, what are the key soft and digital skills that are essential over time? How deep should this skill, soft and digital skills training be? And who should be responsible for the training? In fact, one of the pain that we often have to deal with is how and where do I start? As a social provost looking at the skills future, I work with adults. My task is primarily to re-equip the adults to ensure that they are well-skilled so as not to lose their jobs. And many times when I deal with these adults, the fundamental challenge they have is where do I begin? Where do I start to reskill myself in order to be relevant? So let me deal with the soft skills. This is a plethora of soft skills that you may have from creativity, collaboration, adaptability, decision making, higher EQ, problem solving, communication. You may ask a question how do I acquire all these things? I'd like to suggest sometimes they are acquired when you are young. We require these skills in a, in a very uh, 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 nurturing environment. But many times it, it, is, it is also due to our self-discipline and self-practice. For example, decision-making. We can become better decision-maker if we learn how to do reflection. Reflecting on the last decision that I made or the bad decision that I made and how I can make the decision a lot better. It could also be due to self-awareness, like for example, the way I interact with others in terms of high EQ. Am I too aggressive? Am I talking too loud? 
Am I basically being very egocentric as it is, right? So the soft skills in many ways can be practiced. They form the very human part of us, you see what I mean? And we can attend courses. We can do much more reflection in the way we interact with others, whether we are too domineering, whether we speak too loud, or whether we are too exertive, or whether we develop a career, a character in which winner takes all, and I'm the winner, and the rest I don't care as it is. Or do we use our soft skills to create in us this persona that in each of these negotiations, I need to leave enough money on the table for the other party so that we have a win-win proposition. So ladies and gentlemen, if you look at the leaders that you have, as I mentioned, the presidents among all the great uh, 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 professional bodies in front uh, that we have today, you realize most, if not all of them, have arrived at their career success. And their pinnacle of their career and influence primarily not only due to the technical competency or the hard work, but their ability to exercise soft skills to persuade the people. David Deming, Harvard University, did a study in the US looking at the change in the share of jobs from 1980 to 2012. What are the kinds of jobs that has grown in terms of share? The green dot, the, the green dots. What are the jobs that has failed in terms of jobs, all right, uh, uh, quantity, all right, the number of jobs available, those in orange dot, and those jobs that remain relatively stable. And what he did was he classified those jobs across two dimensions. The vertical dimension axis is the social skills, and the horizontal dimension is the mathematical skills. If you look at this chart, there are a few conclusions that you can come with. Number one, right? you will find that those jobs that require low social skills and low mathematical skills, generally, these are almost like the machine jobs that will be significantly and systematically fail over time and will be eliminated, right? And if you look at, again, you realize that all those jobs that require high social skills, and most of them are generally green dots which tells us the importance of the social skills in the development of work. And the last aspects, those jobs that require high social skills and high mathematical skills generally are the green field jobs as it is, right? So I am an educator. In the good old days in Singapore, we always constantly emphasize two dimensions, mathematical skills and communication skills. Right. Now we start to understand why do we emphasize these two skills? Because these are the social skills and the mathematical skills that allows us to be successful. What are the top social, five social uh, soft skills? Right. LinkedIn is a very significant uh, 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 platform. All right. uh, uh, later on, I'll introduce you more about LinkedIn. They produce a lot of very good uh, research articles. In 2020, the study, they say, the skills companies need most in 2020 are number one, creativity, number two, persuasion, number three, collaboration, number four, adaptability, and emotional intelligence emerges as one of the new five top soft skills. Going forward, we can validate this through the economic uh, forum, uh, econo World Economic Forum, where they did a study uh, asking the companies, all right, what are the relative importance of the different skill groups? And if you look at the five top uh, uh, skill groups that are increasing, that means the longer bar in terms of the deep blue bar, you realize the top five of them primarily pertains to soft skills. In other words, technical skills is always assumed, all right? What we need to drill down further are the soft skills plus, later on I'll show you the digital skills as it does. So the next we need to deal with is the digital skills, a new frontier in the future of work. The APEC CEOs was asked right, by LinkedIn, well, how much do APEC CEO think technology will change completion in the industry in the next five years? 
76% of them says in the next five years, technology will significantly, if not completely reshape the competition in their industry. So ladies and gentlemen, the digital waves and tsunami is no joke as it is, right? So this is where the young people, the workers of today will have to sit up and pay special attention to this space. Let me give you another chart. Technology is likely to be adopted by 2025 by share of company survey. You realize those that are red color, they have circle, cloud computing, encryption and cybersecurity, distributed ledger technology like blockchain, robots, humanoids, all these are increasing by more than 10% when you try to compare 2020, 2018 with 2025, right? Every one of them are increasing in terms of importance over time, you see, right? And if the young people do not catch this wave, unfortunately, you may find yourself being swept away. So let me show you another uh, slice of it, all right? World Economic Forum breaks down the demands of all those sectors, uh, demands of all those skills by the sectors. I outline for you the, the purple box. The purple box, pertains to the financial services, which I presume this is where our sector is. If you look at the bright red within the purple box, all right, if you look at the bright red within the purple box as it is, you realize the artificial intelligence, 95% of the companies surveyed will deem these as a technology that is likely to be introduced by 2025, all right? And you go on to look at uh, sorry, 90% uh, 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 of them, artificial intelligence, and then big data, 91%, 98% of them will move to cloud computing. 90% of them will basically look at e-commerce and digital, uh, digital uh, 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 trade, and encryption and cybersecurity, 95. So again, it gives us a slice and a pattern. So within the finance industry, this is what is going to happen. If we stand out at the corridor of time, we can almost guess that digitalization will significantly disrupt the financial industry as it is. And this is something that we already have the warning. And this is what we need to train ourselves for in the next lab. We ask ourselves, how deep should the digital tech skills be? So let me share with you, uh, I consider myself an old dog. Right, trying to learn some new technology along the way. So let me just give you a, 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 a case to see what we can do. Let's assume I'm asked to price an exotic financial instrument. These exotic financial instruments uh, right, have one, one set of attributes. The first set of attributes is what we so-called a random walk with a positive dream. This financial instrument has a starting value of 100,000 US dollars. And it exists for four periods or four years. For every period, it has a 50% chance where the value go up and a 50% chance where the value goes down. So this is where the random walk we are talking about. It, it, it's like a drunkard man as it is. If the value goes up, it goes up by 5%. If it goes up, it goes up by three minus 3%. Three this is where the positive drift enters the picture. That means it goes up more than it goes down. That's where the positive drift and that's where the random walk. I can create, and this instrument can also have another possible attributes where it's a correlated work. Everything the same, 100,000 as a starting point. Uh, instrument exists for four period. For the first period, it has 50% chance going up, 50% chance going down. But after that, for the subsequent period, right, the movement, the price movement is correlated. In that sense, if the last period is up, this period, the chance of going up is 60% instead of 50%. If last period is down, this period, the chances of going down will be 60%. This is where the correlated part enters the picture. All right? And the value goes up by 5% and it goes up by minus 3%. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are in an interviewee coming to see me and I'm going to give you this exotic financial instrument to price and I give you an hour to do it. And I ask you to answer for me, how do you price this instrument if the discount rate is zero? How much are you going to pay for this instrument today to price this? And if that is the test for you to get uh, your job, what would happen to you? Or what would you do? Right. So let me suggest to you there are a few things. 
those of you who are well schooled in terms of uh, spreadsheet, you'll use a spreadsheet to deal with this uh, question because this is a standard binomial pricing tree with a random walk plus a positive tree. The only problem is this, for the four periods, because each period, it has two outcomes. That means after four periods, the possible states that you have is what we so-called two to the power for 16 possible values. And then you do the computation and the value of this exotic instrument is about $104,000 and $104,060 and 40 cents. Right. If I do this, if I move forward, and this is a, a, a same uh, a, a instrument, but with the second set where it's a correlated work, you do exactly the same. But right now, the 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 probability is that all fifty, the probability changes depending on whether is it up or down because of the correlated work. Ladies and gentlemen, the question is. What if your instrument is 10 days? Because if it's only four days, you got two to the power is only 16 state. If it's 10 days, two to the power of 10, you're 1064 states. Question, can your spreadsheet deal with it? So welcome to new technology. So what I've done is I created, I, I went to learn how to do Python programming. And using Python programming, using 35 lines, and these are all the group of parameters, the $100,000 starting value. I run a simulation of 5 million. The up value is 0 0.5, is 5%. Down value is 3%. Number of days is four. If I run this simulation, it will give me an expected value as $104,171, which is $1 different from the Excel spreadsheet that I have. And this entire runtime is 12.6 seconds. I run 5 million rounds of simulations. The error margin is 0.001%. Ladies and gentlemen, I can e easily increase this number of days from 4 to 10. Welcome to the world of digital technology. Right. So this is what we desire our young people to do. Uh, we desire young people to capture the imagination and to deploy themselves using the technology that they have. So the data analytics knowledge metrics, right? So this is what we try to do. You see, in the program that we have, I have uh, that I led in Singapore, we are very conscious that in training accountants, we are not training data scientists. We don't need them to do sophisticated, too deep data scientist work, but we want them to understand data analytics and these are the possible stages, the collection, the processing, the visualization, the predictive, right? And these are some of the so-called softwares that we teach our students, or we want them to at least get a feel of it because some of these softwares are being used by companies, all right? Bloomberg terminals are used by traders for that matter, right? And these are some of the exposure to data analytics and business simulation, right? So uh, let me uh, again use the point, old dogs, new tricks, right? So last week or this week, I went to attend a course on Tableau. Tableau is a very nice so-called data visualization software. I spent two days this week to attend a course, right, on Tableau. I'm just scratching the surface. Ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the output that I learned in using Tableau. How to be able to present the sales of my divisions using a geography map, a geographical representation of sales. And I also learned how to use a visual analysis of high growth and profitable firms. That means you will look at this whole suite, six items as it is. It started out with, I want to see which are the profitable firms and non-profitable. The non-profitable, firstly, on this particular chart, these are the non-profitable firms. These are all the profitable firms. Then I say, what are the profitable firms that has that are also grown a hundred percent, right? You see a bit more red that doesn't fall. Only the blue are what we're looking for. Then I look at those firms that are growing at two hundred percent, growing at three hundred percent, and growing at five hundred percent, and finally, com high profitable companies are growing at seven hundred percent. You see that there are very few of them. Ladies and gentlemen, by definition, I can almost present the data 
in however creative manner I want that will capture the imaginations of your customers, of your clients, or of your bosses. So welcome to the world of technology. Welcome to the world of data, so-called uh, visualization. So let me finish off uh, my, my, my presentation today, presenting to you the food for thoughts, right? You see, how do we arrive here? It's discipline and commitment. The famous uh, Malcolm, uh, 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 Mal, uh, Mal, uh, the author 10,000 hours rule. It requires you 10,000 hours to have that kind of expertise, right? I didn't spend 10,000 hours on Tableau. I started off and I know, now I know I have an instrument that I can use. I spent probably about 10 days learning how to program in Python as it is, right? So ladies and gentlemen, I'm an old dog, right? You are all young people, right? The sky is the limit. You have to commit yourself to the discipline and the commitment to want to search for new things, right? Self-initiative learning, inquisitive learning and lifelong learning, right? I learned all my life concerning the things I like to do because I like to search for new knowledge. I like to search for new ways of doing things. I'm never contented concerning what I do today that is successful because I want to look for greater way to be successful. And ladies and gentlemen, young people, you are capable of doing all these things. I show for you here, this is Coursera. Coursera offer many, many free courses. And this is the beauty of today's online world. See? You can attend courses. I learned how to program in Python by attend by subscribing to a free Coursera course because I wasn't willing to pay for it as it is. All right. The course has about, I think, 10 sessions. And I spent probably, this is where I spent about my 10 days learning how to do programming in Python from Coursera. Allow me to show you also one free slide. I just concluded the Singapore National Skills Future event by the Institutes of Higher Learning. So I was very fortunate to be the chairman to organize this Singapore national level where we put together uh, all our IHLs to feature the kind of training that we have. We invited LinkedIn to share with us the skill-based economy and importance of lifelong learning. This was by Frank Ku from LinkedIn. See, the nice and beautiful things is this, ladies and gentlemen, we have recorded the 52 sessions that cover LinkedIn and talks on all these areas, about half an hour, an hour talk on jobs and skills, digitization, smart manufacturing, and so on and so forth. 52 workshops, and they're all found in this website. And the nicest thing is this, they're all free, right? You can access the talks, the 52 talks here from now all the way until 22nd of July, 2022. And this is a website that we've created that allows free access because we wanted the whole of Singapore to be able to access upgrading opportunities. And may I suggest, I can open, this is open to all of you too, all right? Because once it's on internet, we are not able to discriminate whoever can access it. So may I invite you to go and take a look at this, right? Start your engine, scrape the, 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 Script the top part first and then develop further. And allow me to conclude. The new education imperatives looks like this. There are opportunities, opportunities for creative redesign, reskill. There are new opportunities. And I'd like to suggest we're all uniquely human, right? This is our greater strength that we are human. We are adaptive, we are resilient, we are creative. We're able to do with fuzzy logics as it is, right? So these are opportunities before us. But however, we must not uh, be bogged down by the challenges. For example, we must not be overwhelmed. We must not feel that we are lost and paralyzed. We, we don't have the power to change where our current destiny is, or we procrastinate, or we drift. And I use the word NATO. Uh, no action, talk only. <laughs> no action, talk only. So ladies and gentlemen, all right, uh, start young, start where you are. To, with today's internet, the world is the limit concerning your ability to retool yourself in the future of your profession and the future skills that you have, all right? So thank you very much uh, for your time and I will stop here and look forward to the panel discussion. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Professor Ho. I think uh, before the paper, I just want to say a few words. Uh, I think that was a very, very excellent and uh, brilliant presentation, especially uh, for our students, because I think uh, you have showed the way as to how they can really make use of uh, these opportunities, especially in the digital world, which we are really now talking of. So we are very, very uh, uh, thankful to you because I know that you are talking about the new uh, technology and uh, we've just done a, a revision of our syllabus where you helped us a great deal to bring in the technology part. And as you said, maybe we need to keep uh, improving on it. So I think it was a very, very uh, excellent uh, presentation. I must uh, thank you very much uh, because uh, you are also the chairman of our academic uh, advisory academic board, you know, so academic advisory board of CMA Sri Lanka. So students, uh, you know uh, who is going to uh, help us and also who is heading our academic activities and advising us. So that was a great uh, uh, presentation. Uh, that was done uh, not only uh, on the education side, by the skill development, the job opportunities, uh, reskilling. So all these are, uh, I think, uh, what was really given. And of course, ultimately, uh, where how you can get free education and uh, the use of uh, maybe the website uh, of uh, Singapore Institute of Technology. So if you permit us to uh, have that uh, maybe the index on our website, we we'll greatly appreciate so that our students would be able to go and access it. So let me once again, thanking you, let me also welcome uh, our uh, Mr. Zia from uh, uh, the president of CMA Pakistan, also a past president of SAFA. We greatly uh, appreciate your presence and uh, uh, welcome you to this uh, meeting. And now I hand over to the uh, compares to go on the balance program. Professor Ho, I hope you can stay on for the uh, panel discussion yeah. so that any questions could be taken up. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for a very interesting and an informative speech today. We were fortunate to listen to your views and on behalf of the organizing committee, I would like to thank you once again for that brilliant speech. Now, we would like to invite two of our very own council members, Mr. Ruchira Pereira and Professor Harendra to conduct a panel discussion involving the presidents of different institutions to get their views on the speech delivered by Professor Hoyuki. Ruchira Pereira is a practicing accountant and a lecturer, and he is currently the chairman of Accounting Standards and CPD Committee of the Institute. Professor Harindra is the head of the Department of Accounting of University of Sri Javardhanapura and chairman of the examination committee of the Institute. Now we would like to briefly introduce our panelists of the session, starting with our keynote speaker of the session, Professor Ho Yu Ki, Associate Provost, Skills Future. Followed by Professor Lakshman R. Watavala the president of CMA Sri Lanka. Mr. A.K.M. Dirwal Hussain, president, South Asian Federation of Accountants. Mr. H.M. Henayaka Bandara, vice president, CMA Sri Lanka, and vice president, South Asian Federation of Accountants. Mr. Biswara Basu, president, Institute of Cost Accountants of India. Mr. Seol Mustafa, President, Institute of Cost and Management Accountants, Pakistan. Mr. Manil Jaisingh, President, Institute of Chartered Accountants of Sri Lanka. Mr. Mohammed Manirul Islam, Vice President, Institute of Cost and Management Accountants, Bangladesh. Dr. Balvinder Singh, Immediate Past President, Institute of Cost Accountants of India. Mr. Mohammed Halim, Vice Chairman of Academic Committee, Chartered Accountants of Maldives. Now, we would like to invite our moderators to start the panel discussion. Uh, thank you, Isuru. Uh, thank you, Achini. Uh, respected uh, panel. So we have here today, uh, starting with Professor Ho Yuki, who delivered the keynote speech. We have 
respected presidents as well as vice presidents of various institutions representing SAFA member countries. And also we have the immediate past president of ICA, uh, ICA Post Accountants of India. Uh, so as, uh, the, as the compeers have mentioned, we will be uh, basing our panel discussion. We'll be asking questions based on the presentation delivered by Professor Ho UK. So let me ask, maybe I can turn to uh, Mr. Sia from Pakistan. Sir, now based on what Professor has has mentioned in his presentation, can we know to what extent ICMA Pakistan has integrated IT, especially in their curriculum as well as in the examinations? Thank you very much, Mr. Prerab. First of all, I would like to appreciate uh, ICMA and Sri Lanka for organizing this session. Uh, this is a wonderful session for the youth and uh, the importance of uh, accountancy is, uh, you know, everywhere uh, right now in this business world. Uh, this profession relates to every sector of economy, whether it is a, a textile mill or an airline or a hotel or uh, any other business. The financial management is the integral part of any business management. So uh, if we look towards the accounting profession, how this accounting profession is growing around the globe, uh, this is very much encouraging that with the passage of time, uh, the accounting uh, profession is now standardized and almost 115 countries around the globe are following the uh, international financial reporting standards and we are following the auditing standard. The best thing for the students that uh, wherever they are, whether they are in Sri Lanka or they have to go for a job for in UAE, Dubai or Singapore, anywhere, the accounting profession has a uniformity. The accounting profession is following the, uh, you know, international standards. And now <clears throat> this is the era of technology. Now the accountants are very much updated and they are moving themselves to the, you know, technology enabled solutions. Initially, we were, you know, giving the education of accountancy and the different branches of accountancy, financial accounting, cost and management accounting, and then the auditing profession. Right now, this is now the essential part of the curriculum that everybody has to be familiarity with the different softwares, whether, uh, you know, uh, it's a SAP, Oracle, uh, which gives the solution of the complete business. And now, Further, with the enhancement of further technology advancements, now the things are moving towards the different other tools, analytical tools, artificial intelligence, and uh, you know, blockchain technology. These are the things which uh, Professor rightly point out that now this is the time we have to align ourselves, we have to learn this. And uh, I'm glad that all the professional accounting organizations in the region of South Asia, in their curriculum, uh, this is very much there. If I just talk about, as you said, the curriculum of the ICMA Pakistan, we have, you know, uh, one of the main pillar is innovation and technology. This is one of the main pillar of the, of the uh, curriculum of ICMA Pakistan. No doubt we are uh, giving the education of accounting and uh, accounting and finance is one of the main thing, then management and leadership. And uh, in addition to management and leadership, now we are, giving the trainings and the learning opportunities to the members and the, to the students about the latest tools in the technology. So this is how we are very much aligned. We are adopting the standards, which is you know defined by the IFEC. And more or less, I believe in, uh, in the South Asia, we all are, we all are, you know, have adopted all such things. So I believe with the passage of time, this will be, this will be further uh, improved. And uh, the talent in the South Asia. Hope if you. Uh, Mr. Sia, are you there or your connection got stuck, I think? Dr. Balbinder, 
I'll ask this question from Dr. Balvin, the professor. Uh, Dr. Balvin, the, now being the immediate past president of uh, cost accountants of India, uh, what, do you, what do you have to add to this? What do you have to add to what Mr. C.I. has mentioned? Sorry, I think there was a disconnect. Ah, sorry, so sorry, is, Mr. C.I. This is my submission, Mr. Sarah. This is my, you know, yeah. update from my side about the ICMA Pakistan and uh, yeah. about the, you know, the, uh, you know, what is right now is going on the POs. Okay, thank you, Ms. Sia, uh, uh, for elaborating us on, uh, elaborating us as to how ICA Pakistan, ICMA Pakistan has integrated IT, especially in the curriculum as well as in examination. So I will now turn to Dr. Balvin Singh, being the immediate past president, sir. Uh, what can you add to what Mrs. Sia has mentioned? How has ICMA India, ICA India, as we say it, how ICA India has integrated IT in their curriculum and the examination? Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah. Uh, President Safa, President Sri Lanka, and all other uh, member bodies and dear friends. Uh, it's a privilege to be part of this event and uh, the topic of this session being the your skill, your future. And the question puts to me what how we have integrated. Uh, if we look into the profession, we presently face the challenges of attraction, challenges of relevance, challenges of change. And this uh, new skill economy is placing a greater emphasis on uh, work culture. Uh, presently, we see the initial education and certification of an accountant is no longer going to be sufficient for uh, uh, during career and a guaranteed job, unless it is uh, uh, coupled with the industry acceptable skill sets. And definitely, these challenges result in a clear shift in education, uh, career, as well as the education choices. The need of today is that the education system should uh, focus on learning rather than studying. And it should go beyond curriculum and should uh, emphasize critical thinking. The emphasis should be on passion, practicality, performance, and uh, Employability should be the prime target with the practical learning approaches and the industry acceptable uh, skill sets. We have seen there is a digital shift in the technology and the fundamental change in business models, how we collect the information. Now, all this evolution, we need to uh, teach the student to make them uh, skill ready. Uh, see this, we need to see that our students uh, are adapt to the new technology, uh, that the reporting and control are the need of the industry we must train them on that and we have seen the shift to the cloud-based computing also this is a drastic change in the mindset which is a more productive cost of change manner that the accountant will work <clears throat> this technology advancements uh, including artificial intelligence cloud computing data analytical are eventually putting a permanent change in the accounting function now what we have done in the cma to see that uh, we are aligned to the industry acceptable skill sets uh, in the 2020 curriculum we have introduced a world-class uh, employability and techno skill development training programs in our curriculum. This is a long-term vision of the institute uh, and as a professional social responsibility of our, our institute to see that a student pursuing the CMA should possess, acquire robust employability skills with, uh, coupled with the global challenges and uh, they become future-ready professional. Uh, we launched a uh, of online world-class employability and techno skill programs. Uh, there are the four programs we launched uh, uh, in the intermediate level itself, which is a mandatory for all these students, it is a SAP certification by the SAP India, uh, jointly with the institute wherein the students get the full fledged SAP PICO course uh, with the examination and uh, dual certification by the SAP India as well as the uh, Institute of Cosmos of India. Second certification and the train uh, skill set we have started with the Microsoft certification. The students are being trained in the Microsoft uh, systems and softwares wherein uh, Training is by the Microsoft India, jointly by our institute, and the course certification is here. We have also introduced a soft skill and employability skill program of the Cambridge University, the certification by the Cambridge University, uh, jointly with us. We have also introduced uh, various uh, e-filing software. We are giving training to all the e-filing systems and software taxation or the corporate law to our intermediate student. It means today the intermediate student is ready with the SAP, uh, SAP training, the Microsoft training, the soft skill set certification through Cambridge University as well as the e-filing of all. Uh, this is a revolution step to ensure that the skill sets for accountant student, uh, accountancy students uh, are those which are acceptable by the uh, industry. Today, industry workflow is through computers. Office working by handwriting is a real. When industry has shifted to computer-based working, we need to think in the education system right from childhood 
whether we need to continue to develop uh, handwriting practice or uh, skills in the earlier education as well as the vocational education and including the accounting education or we need to shift to the industry acceptable skill set uh, whether we need to see whether we as an institute are ready for transformation to online examination also we all accounting body need to work towards the direction to see that uh, accountants is to possess industry acceptable skill sets uh, with this i'm thankful to the organizing team uh, for allowing me to speak thank you thank you doctor uh, yes uh, we had very fruitful presentation uh, even though online education has become essential there are several problem faced by both lecturers and students uh, are your association aware of such issues and if answer is yes what are the actions taken by your association to minimize those i like to hear from mr ba uh, bas or mr mohammad mr mohammad is not in the panel so maybe we can uh, uh, ask from mohammad halib ah uh, mohammad halib yeah yes yeah uh, good afternoon uh, distinguished uh, professionals from our regional accountancy bodies thank you uh, for giving us the opportunity uh, we would like to express our appreciation Uh, for giving us this opportunity from uh, CS Sri Lanka, and we believe uh, this is a good learning experience for us as well because uh, we are yet to celebrate our first anniversary. We recently started, and we believe uh, we can uh, progress on the footstep of uh, CS Sri Lanka and also other regional accountancy bodies as well. And and also we believe collectively. Uh, we can have a very strong regional voice uh, when we are to develop the accounting profession and also what we want to incorporate in the development of the accounting profession in general or uh, worldwide and uh, this is a good opportunity for us and uh, we in, in the future also uh, our ca mollis will give our full cooperation uh, uh, with you in future endeavors and also regarding uh, the subject of the uh, this webinar is uh, what we have seen from the presentation by the professor uh, this is the time for us to act if we are to succeed in future because uh, uh, the accounting profession and also the whole business uh, function today is based on it and also on the digital platforms so this is the high time for us to act if we are to succeed in future and uh, when we uh, we are also in the process of developing our competency framework uh, for ca bodies and when we when we are doing that we are also giving a uh, special priority on uh, digitalization it infrastructure and also about the sustainability of our accounting profession as well and uh, we are planning in a way that uh, to minimize the paperwork in future and also for the uh, licensing requirements and also for the qualification and necessary exams we are also trying to have our uh, digital platforms and it infrastructure instead of paper based uh, uh, other necessary arrangements then uh, we are in the stage of developing our profession and still uh, 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 we are yet to do uh, the necessary things so yes we are giving priority on it and also sustainability and also uh, we are encouraging our students and also our members uh, to uh, we will uh, give cpd sessions like uh, continuous uh, professional development sessions more on it uh, and also more on uh, digitalization so the purpose of that is to make them and all make them better professionals in their field uh, when we uh, need the those uh, requirements most uh, thank you for giving us the opportunity yes we are giving the priority on it infrastructure and digitalization and we believe this is a time for us to act if we are doing that collectively we can do this and we will give our full cooperation thank you okay okay thank you mr thank you, thank you mr uh, 
and uh, our vice president cms lanka mr henry uh, i think uh, mr manil jayasinghe is there maybe he can uh, speak from that area mr okay. manil uh, okay uh, mr hennayaka vice president of cms sri lanka can you give an overview of the syllabus and how cms supported cms sri lanka supported the students to improve their skills brief introduction mr hennay uh, thank you professor harendra i think uh, professor ho very clearly mentioned uh, the content of our syllabus uh, uh, as far as the leadership as well as the business communication etc Uh, nevertheless i think uh, if you take the overall view uh, the syllabus has been developed under three core streams uh, namely the management accounting financial accounting and business management and uh, this is followed by supportive and skill streams uh, to include it and communication related courses uh, the modules i think those are the two modules uh, the professor ho very clearly uh, mentioned the some of the key highlights of the the syllabus was the introduction of a speech craft program i think our president was very keen on introducing this one at uh, the way back in 2016 and uh, workshop series which include the practical modules uh, to enhance students communication skills and the computer based accounting module which is a hands on practical model to work on accounting software Uh, in 2021 in, the, in other words and this year we introduced a new areas to the syllabus uh, the main purpose of this was to really incorporate the latest uh, advancement in the information technology digitalization and data analytics in relation to the accounting and business field and align our syllabus as to be part of uh, these new developments in fact uh, we discussed uh, these areas in detail at committee level at council level and as our president professor watwal mentioned that we sought some kind of advice from our advisory board as well and finally we were able to implement i think now almost educational providers also are fully aware of it and sure that we will be able to produce and the very good results going forward thank you thank you mr yes, manil mr manil I, i i think you are in the panel mr manil i would like to know how ca sri lanka has integrated it information technology in the ca sri lanka curriculum and also in the examinations uh, we uh, mr okay until mr yeah. manil joins back uh, i think we have the representative from uh, icma b icma bangladesh he was uh, here in the panel again i can't see uh, mr munrul islam joined and i can't see him again okay professor ho uh, then i would uh, like to go back to your presentation you have mentioned that linkedin linkedin as a tool that students should look for new new knowledge especially for new articles new knowledge and to what extent students are referring linkedin now i have seen in sri lanka compared to facebook not many students are going to linkedin i mean not many students are referring articles and journals in linkedin to what extent i mean what can we do to popularize linkedin so linkedin is a very popular tool in fact it is a very popular professional tool for people to be linking to each other so in fact in singapore uh, what we do is that like in singapore institute of technology we ask every student to sign up for linkedin to be able to put on their profile into linkedin and from there to be able to somehow showcase their skill sets is that right and uh, linkedin also you can also go for what are the badges what are the things that you are an expert in or things that you are good in or you can actually almost like uh, uh, it's like a professional portfolio that tracks uh, your progression your qualifications is that I mean, what have you been doing in your job is that I mean, what are the skill set that you have So, like for example, I also have a LinkedIn account because uh, <laughs> my professional body requires me to have one, <laughs> so that uh, so that uh, I'm visible in the professional space, you see, right? So this is what the student can think I can do. You see, I think the students today must understand that they are digital natives, right? They they grow up in in the digital world, and when they grow up in the digital world, 
this is where they need they, they, they will be able to further explore and exploit the, the digital world uh, to propel their skill sets, uh, to propel their career and to propel basically their, their employability to the world. Thank you, thank you, Professor. So I would like to ask some panelists, anybody can answer this, to what extent, to what extent and how frequently you evaluate the, uh, now say, for example, the business partner in role, business partner in role in the curriculum. Uh, maybe we can ask from Mr. Sia. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> uh, business partnering role in the curriculum, normally there are, you know, uh, Specialized companies are available uh, for this matter. And uh, ICM in Pakistan did this exercise uh, three to four years back with one of the renowned company, Kaplan Publishing, uh, in the development of the curriculum. So uh, these are the experts company and uh, they have uh, such kind of expertise in house and uh, uh, they are doing this job for a number of uh, professional accounting organization. So uh, we believe that uh, uh, Taking them as a partner uh, is not a bad it's not the bad experience, and I uh, endorse that the PUs should, uh, you know, go for this kind of partnership uh, with the specialized companies, those who are you know developing their curriculums uh, for uh, accountancy profession. So our experience was very good at the ICMA Pakistan, and uh, there are a number of companies available. I just took the name of the company to which we were uh, working. So I believe that normally they are updated, they have in-house resources, and now they are giving the digital solutions as well. This is now the era of technology. There are online learning modules are available, online lectures are available, and then there is a practice questions are available. They are uh, giving the options to the students as well, uh, you know, for the practice questions, for the, you know, uh, before the exam, there is mock exam, availability online. So these companies have developed a number of tools and uh, one of the company, Ville, you know, this is one of the renowned company, which is, uh, you know, also working around the globe. So they, uh, I believe that partnering is always, you know, make a synergy and uh, we should get the benefit from this synergy. Mr. Manil. Yes, sorry, sorry, I do. On some other point, yeah. yeah. I was asking Mr. Manel to what extent the curriculums, I mean, to what extent professional institutions evaluate and adjust the curriculums to reflect the business partner in role. Yeah, so actually, the one of the uh, I was listening to Professor Ho's uh, presentation. The one of the problems with many of these curriculums is that uh, these uh, the skills and attitude are not necessarily focused on they are still focusing on the knowledge component uh, that is one of the one of the difficulties i think we have uh, and the technology part also uh, it's addressed in more the knowledge part of it rather than the, 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 the practical application or you know the problem solving ability of this uh, technology part uh, so where where the professional engineers are struggling is how to bring that uh, attitude as well as the skills into a sort of accessible development model of a student. Hmm. Because these are all, uh, these are not things where you can examine them on an exam, uh, in an assessment or something like that. So that is the, the, the difficulty I think I'm sure most professional institutions are having. In, in, yeah. in intent, we, we believe that this is a very critical area. Hmm. Um, I mean, the professor was talking about, you know, things like emotional intelligence, uh, your adaptability, I mean, I call it agile. Uh, all these things are, I, I think, see, see uh, I think somewhere one of his slides said that uh, knowledge is now given. I mean, I, I don't think it's a differentiator any longer. Yeah. Yeah. What is going to be a differentiator is what uh, I think Professor alluded to is the is this, uh, the attitudes and the skills, hmm. which, which is going to be critical going forward. So, I don't know, I, I haven't got an answer to this, but I think all educational institutions, uh, uh, professional plus uh, academia, uh, everyone is struggling with this whole equation as to how to bring this about. That's right. Uh, so we have used things like, you know, things like practical training is 
something like that, but that's not really giving us that uh, uh, the real true essence of what I think the professor is also trying to get at. Uh, so we will have to work on how to develop this to some extent. Yeah. But I don't have an answer for you. I know the issue and uh, I know that we are trying to bring this in in, a, in in some form or the other because a lot of people misunderstand these skills also. Uh, this is what I have noticed. Sometimes when you say uh, communication, uh, they, they, they misunderstand this with language skills. Mm. I, I think that, I don't know, my personal view is that different things. Communication is, is a mechanism where you can convince someone else or you be convinced or, you know, how you put a message across. Uh, language helps, but language is not necessarily the only ingredient in that. Yeah, that's right. No. So, so, so that is where I think we are struggling because we 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 like to see uh, also being accountants we like to see nice equations you know a plus b plus whatever. <laughs> unfortunately these two elements do not fit into that equation model yeah. so how you develop a person's uh, what we call the soft skills or the the skills and the attitude say so even the attitude problem the problem with accountancy is it's a bit of a difficult uh, subject because. It's like a, you know, like a pilot, I think. A pilot has to be very, they have to be very safe because they are having so many lives in their hand, right? So they are risk averse, can I put it that way? Yeah. But at the other, other side, we are trying to tell an accountant, you have to be agile and you have to do problem solving and all these things. So which are, to me, uh, uh, diverse skill sets. Yeah. So how you marry these two, is the challenge, I think we have, I don't know, Professor might be able to add a little bit more, but this is where I think we are struggling. Uh, but uh, definitely as a profession, accounting, I think we have to find a solution to this. Yeah. If, yeah. if we are going to uh, be relevant and develop the necessary competency for the future. Yeah. No, so, Vatavala, would you like to add anything to that? Uh, yeah. Uh, what I would like to say, I think, uh, what... Uh, uh, Mr. Manil mentioned is absolutely correct on the attitude and of course the skill set are required. Now, one of the things that we have done is, uh, I think it has really shown good results, is the uh, mandatory speech craft program, you know, for all uh, uh, fi uh, final year students and others. But before grant of membership, uh, we uh, put them through the speech craft program. It's a 12-week program and we find that uh, at the first class, all of them are seated maybe in the last row. They uh, don't want to come up. But in the final session, when we are there, we can see the way that they have really grasped the knowledge and they are able to speak. Uh, they have uh, forgotten their fear and uh, they really want to go uh, and do this. But uh, with this pandemic, we had the problem, you know, because these are all classroom-based uh, uh, lectures that we are conducting. So what we did was we tried the digital uh, uh, mode and actually it is very, very successful. Yeah. Even in the digital mode, they have been able to uh, extremely uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, be uh, able to do the carry out the roles that they have to play. Because uh, the speech craft is a program which will develop you. If you really don't follow it, you are the loser. So that's... Uh, something that we have seen. And even on the digital mode, uh, we have done now about four or five classes on digital mode. And definitely, uh, uh, they have been really uh, excellent. You know, all the students, their performances have been excellent and they've been all been able to network among themselves to learn leadership uh, qualities, forget their fear. So that is a very excellent thing. But in addition to that, for the digital skills, Again, we had the problem of conducting physical classes and we have done it online. So that's another great achievement that we have done. And this COVID-19 has really done certain good things for the education field. And these are things that I feel that it should be carried forward for the betterment of the student population. So can Thank I you, chip in here? Yeah. Can I chip in yeah. here? So I think Manio uh, uh, raised a very excellent points. See, this is where you see I, I'm a, I, I'm on the Singapore uh, Council uh, for the CPA Australia, and this is what we wrestle with as a professional body. How do we ensure our relevance? You see, we think about the the student coming in to become a member is only the first stage, and I think I uh, share I agree, Manuel. Ma, Manuel, in that sense, when they enter the professional body, they must be of quality. 
And their quality is judged primarily on their knowledge, you see, right? The knowledge and the capability of being an accountant. At the university level, we struggle with that too. We are able to impart knowledge, but it's very hard for us to impart skills. It's very hard for us to impart attitudes, you see. So one of the things that we have decided, uh, what we thought was a good move was to re-look at education and say, maybe we need to go for lifelong education. And this is precisely where the professional body becomes exceptionally relevant, right? See, we're taking a, a, a person to be a professional accountant, a CPA or CA, upon their capability in terms of knowledge. But what we do is as a professional body, we groom them for the rest of their lives, right? We arrange for them Toastmaster Club. We arrange for them digital upscaling as it is. We arrange for them all the training programs which we as a professional body provides for them so that they continue to upskill, right? See, my argument is that if the professional body does not do this, then the members will be asking the question, why do I then belong to a professional body, all right? Uh, all I care about is therefore to have a CA and a CPA. And thereafter, actually, I don't have anything to do with the professional body because I pay a membership deal, but it doesn't give me additional values. So in CP Australia, this is where we reckon with this uh, challenge and say our members, we conduct membership satisfaction survey every year. And every year the members come back and ask us a question. What are you creating in terms of value relevance to us? You see what I mean? How are you ensuring that you are helping us to protect our jobs? How are you helping us in terms of our networking and so on and so forth? So I, I, I like what Manuel says here. I think, we, we don't have to look at education as, as we, we try to do everything in the university. So we do everything at the professional body in terms of our, our program. But we see, we want to bring our accountants along with us for lifelong education, right? And this is where we have to grow together with them. And this is where we create our relevance to them. Design. So I, I see the professional body going forward as not only having the qualification program, but your CPD, uh, continuing professional development, uh, become the lion's share of your relevance. Is it? And this is where you will define the professional body as whether this is the, the progressive or professional body or it is just another professional body. This is my view, all right? Any thoughts here? <laughs> Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Professor. We can't, I think we can't predict an end date for this pandemic. And even when the situation becomes normal, it may be required to use hybrid teaching and learning methods. Mm. So what are the plans of your association to carry out teaching and learning activities in future? I like, can you can we share Bangladesh or Pakistan experience? Mr. Sia, maybe you can answer. Yeah. We don't have the Bangladesh representative. Uh, sorry, uh, if you kindly repeat the... Uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, it can, the, the, this pandemic is, and even when the situation becomes normal, because uh, we can't predict an end date from this pandemic. The, I think it may be required to use hybrid teaching methods uh, in the future also. So what are the plans of your association to carry out teaching and learning activities in future? Do you have any plans? Or? Yes, sir. Uh, this is uh, very much relevant uh, as far as POs are concerned. Uh, ICMA Pakistan itself is uh, uh, engaged in giving the education. We have our own campuses. We are no, not just the examining body. We are also giving the education as well. In the Pakistan, if we, I, I talk about then in the seven major cities, we have our own campuses through which we are giving the learning opportunities. But due to this pandemic, you know, everything is suffered and it is practically not possible to organize the physical classes. And uh, this was the, you know, a challenge. And uh, likewise, the examination was uh, also computer-based examination we were organizing, but these examination were in the venue of the ICMA, but it was computer-based. But again, due to this pandemic, there was a restriction that the campus will not be open and people will not gather. So over, you know, uh, the whole operation was suffered uh, neither the classes were, we were able to conduct nor we can conduct the examination. On this, the council uh, took a very you know uh, aggressive step, and uh, we you know uh, developed uh, different uh, softwares uh, 
to organize the examination activity on remote access base. When we say remote access base, uh, in this there was a opportunity for the students that while sitting anywhere in the world at their home or at their office, they can give the exam by just talking to the, you know, that, uh, you know, uh, that software. So there was a complete uh, monitoring, uh, proctors were, you know, uh, monitoring all the examination activities and uh, with a complete security and surveillance, uh, we conducted these examination, but this was a challenge, but this challenge create an opportunity for us that we immediately shift from the computer-based, location-based exam to online-based exam. So on-location exam to online exam, this was the major shift uh, in ICMA Pakistan. And then we will, you know, uh, likewise organize the classes uh, through online mode. With this, you know, with this step, now the people and the students and the, you know, they are now uh, feeling more flexible with the passage of time that it is easy and convenient to attend the online session and it is very convenient to go for the online examination rather than on location. So uh, with this, our you know scope of uh, operations also broadened. The uh, you know the students and the members, those who are uh, not physically present in Pakistan and in different countries, they are now also able to you know go for this uh, examinations. And uh, this pandemic, uh, on the other hand, create an opportunity and give the confidence to the people that. Uh, we have to, you know, shift on the technology and we have to adopt the technology, you know, uh, as early as possible. So I believe uh, this will be continue and this hybrid solution, uh, as you said, that on physical location and online, both will go together in the future. In the future, on location and online, both will together. And uh, because now people are very much comfortable and where there is no physical infrastructure of the institute exists, in that area, we have to provide this uh, opportunities to the uh, to the students. Okay, thank you, thank you. Then, Mr. Hennaika, can you add something? What are the new measures taken and implemented by CMA Sri Lanka in conducting examinations? Mr. Hennaika, Mr. Hennaika, oh. you are muted. Muted. Ah, okay. Oh, professor. Uh, let me begin with uh, uh, what we have done, uh, starting from. Uh, uh, 2018. I mean, with the launching of the new syllabus in uh, 2018, uh, 2018, uh, we started the computer-based testing via Pearson platform for the foundation level, becoming the pioneer Sri Lankan professional institute to conduct uh, the computer-based testing. And at present, owing to the, uh, the COVID-19 uh, situation, uh, the pandemic, uh, CMA conduct uh, three levels, that is, uh, foundation, operational, as well as the management level, the examination uh, through PSN uh, platform. And uh, on top of that, uh, most of the skill level practical modules such as ITA program and the computer-based testing, and uh, as mentioned our president, uh, uh, the speech craft program, which are usually conducted physically, were also conducted successfully via online platform. So these were the benefit these were benefited the students to complete the courses, the course requirements in a timely manner. And uh, one important thing is that uh, we had to undergo so many difficulties uh, during uh, 2020. The reason being that the earlier examinations were conducted with the support of the examination department of Sri Lanka. But uh, we were able to set up our own examination unit to conduct the examination in May 2020 to pay way for our students uh, to proceed their studies in next level to pursue their career goals without any delay. So those are the, the, the new things as well as the new initiatives that we have taken for the betterment of the students. Thank you, Professor. Okay. I yes, can add uh, just uh, one thing to what Mr. Hennag mentioned. It was similar because we were doing the uh, our computer-based exams in the centers. Yes, that is our computer center. But as a result of this pandemic, now we are giving it uh, remotely. So the students can sit the exam at their maybe uh, home or workplace that is available. So that was another big change uh, that we did as a result of the, uh, the computer-based, like I think Mr. Zia also mentioned that. So similarly, we uh, can be set from their uh, workplace or home. Yeah, Dr. Uh, Prasta, before we wind up, uh, Dr. Balvin and also from Mr. Mohammed, Mr. Mohammed Halim, I want to quickly check from you two. Uh, 
what do you think about the impact of technology to attract the accounting students in the future? In the sense, would you think that uh, technology will help to get more students uh, considering the changes that are going through in the accounting education and examinations, or will it be a distraction? Okay, thank you. Uh, before that, uh, I just want to add something to what uh, Manil, uh, Mr. Manil said regarding the knowledge part of the IT you know, professional programs. As a lecturer for the past 12 years, uh, teaching uh, professional accountancy programs like ACC and also some of the academic programs, I think uh, my uh, understanding is uh, if we want to have a have a simulation module. It is like now that has been practiced uh, by uh, most of the universities for the postgraduate academic programs as well. If we can incorporate a simulation module throughout the course of the professional programs, which includes analytical skills, use of IDs, and also the communication in the way that we can get the end product uh, that we want to uh, have from the professional accountants. I think that will be uh, that can be something that we can see the possibility in future when we change the syllabus. Then we are not getting just the pure knowledge uh, for the students through the course. Before they are going for work, even through their learning process, we will be able to the uh, uh, practical uh, uh, part of it. And also regarding your question of the future of accounting profession, of course, because uh, everything is now online and. We are expecting some of our new, uh, as uh, of, uh, we are talking, uh, even what we, it is evident from the professor's uh, uh, presentation. Uh, in future, we are going to get more, uh, for example, a job done by the machines, not the accountants himself. So uh, what we have to do is uh, we have to, uh, for example, future accountants, uh, that will not be a barrier, that will not be a de something detrimental, but if they are aware of the new technology, if they know how to uh, link the business requirement through accounting profession, then of course, uh, it will be a win-win situation. That's my understanding on this. Thank you. Dr. Balvinder? Yes, sir. Uh, you asked about the uh, digital transformation and uh, how this student will be affected. We can, I can share uh, the real, what we achieved last year. Okay. We introduced skill set of trainings only last year. A drastic change than uh, in-house computer training. Training uh, earlier we were having in-house uh, computer trainings by our uh, local uh, chapters and branches. When we shifted to the high skill set of the SAP and the employability skills of uh, Microsoft and others, and second, this is when we uh, last year we conducted the online examination, which was a dual mode, uh, center-based uh, online as well as a, a remote uh, remote uh, online, the home-based online also. So both things achieved last year skill set digital and also the online examination and we have witnessed uh, we were the only professional institute who conducted the online examination other professional institute did not went for the online examination the result we have achieved last year or seen last year there was a high percentage up in the student admissions we have seen it last year it's not an expectation i'm sure that this digital uh, transformation will bring more students more students will be attracted to the accounting correctly Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Balin. Professor, now I think we are as per the agenda. As per the agenda, we can finish the question and answer uh, session, unless, of course, we have uh, any other questions from the audience. Okay. Yes, Rujit. Okay. Uh, Isuru, I don't think I, we have got any questions from the audience. Maybe you can uh, invite Mr. Hinnayaka to deliver the vote of thanks. You are muted, Isuru. Thank you, sirs, and our panelists for the day and all respected speakers for the knowledge and experience imparted on us at this valuable junction. It was indeed helpful to have you all with us today. We now cordially invite Mr. Hinnayaka Bandar, Vice President of CMS Sri Lanka, and also the Vice President of South Asian Federation of Accountants to give the concluding remarks. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Ishura. Uh, President South Asian Federation of Accountants, President CMA Sri Lanka, Presidents of Staff and Member Bodies, Staff Advisor, Keynote Speaker, Distinguished Invitees, dear students, 
ladies and gentlemen good evening to all as we all know in the past the students in the region didn't have an opportunity to meet the president of sapa or president of sapa member bodies and other office bearers either physically or virtually in a single forum however the covid 19 pandemic paved the way to link all of them in one forum virtually to share their knowledge expertise and experiences amongst all of us although the pandemic has affected adversely on the lives and the economies across the globe one of the advantages we have is that wherever you live you could connect with anybody virtually to participate a conference of this nature and learn much faster than before in today's context what is important is while taking all the health measures to safeguard your life and loved ones you need to make use of all the opportunities created by the pandemic and get the maximum benefits to become the future ready with that note it gives me an immense pleasure to deliver this word of thank to appreciate the valuable contribution made by eminent professionals in the region students leaders and others towards a successful inaugural session of the conference on behalf of cms sri lanka and in my capacity as the vice president of sapa first i would like to thank our chief guest mr akm delausen president sapa for readily accepting our invitation and joining with us to address the students in the region dear president we greatly appreciate your participation and sharing inspirational thoughts to encourage the young energetic future professionals in the region we look forward to your support in our future events as well let me also thank professor ho associate uh, provost singapore institute of technology for accepting our invitation and joining with us from singapore to deliver the keynote speech on the topic us skills your future accounting education new imperative professor ho has contributed immensely for the improvement of the skills and knowledge of our members in the past and today he joined with us to support not only to the students of cmu sri lanka but also the students in the region dear professor your participation in this inauguration session is a tower of strength to all of us i and, and i thank you for delivering an excellent keynote speech and presentation i am sure that the subject knowledge shared and practical examples highlighted will immensely benefit to all our students to make use of the opportunities and deal with future challenges i would also like to thank the advisor sapa president of sapa member bodies and other office bearers for making their congratulatory remarks at this very important occasion and sharing their experience and expertise as panelists to educate all of us on matters relating to accounting education new imperative let me also thank sapa secretariat for the support extended dear friends thank you for your support let me also thank our president of the lakshmana watavala for the guidance and leadership provided in organizing this conference as well as he is behind almost all the program of cma as well as international conferences and the council members of his arendra karyasam and the ruchira pereira for the contribution made as moderators of the panel discussion let me also thank with the mr reshan bonna peru president students guild and his team for the efforts taken to organize this regional conference and building the relationship with the students in the region for importantly the staff of cma for the support extended to students bill and the committee in organizing this event finally i would like to thank all our council members members of the institute distinguished invitees members and 
students of member bodies of SAFA for your participation and the enthusiasm shown to join in and for making this inaugural session a grand success. Thank you, Isuru and Achini for the job done well. Ladies and gentlemen, more subject matters will be deliberated in the technical sessions this evening as well as tomorrow. And I wish all success for the conference. Thank you all. Stay safe and take care. Over to Isuru. With that, we end the inaugural session of our conference. It was indeed wonderful to have you all with us today. Thank you, sirs, and our panelists for the day and all respect to the speakers for the knowledge and experience imparted on us at this invaluable juncture. Thank you very much for your time and patience. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Ho. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you all. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Ho. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you are welcome Achille. to stay on. Any of you want, yeah. you can stay. Achille, on. Achille, actually, we can say that we are going to start the second session in five minutes. Yes. Now we are going to start our second technical session, and I would like to invite Mr. Fasan to continue with the second technical session. Fasan, over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Ashit Achini. Right? So, should we wait for another two? No, 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 no. Okay, you announce, and they will come in. You know? Okay. Uh, okay. Otherwise, we'll lose time. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for giving this opportunity to start the technical session number two. Okay, so uh, you all are warmly welcome to the uh, second technical session of the CMA Sri Lanka International Student Conference of 2021. So, in this technical session, we will be focusing on a very valuable topic. So, that is digitization impact on accounting profession. As we everyone know, accounting profession can be cited as a kind of a traditional profession. But however, in this 21st century, most of the people, that mean the workload of the accountants, are moving from, are transferring from the digital, sorry, the manual platforms, the digital platforms. Not only that, the workload of accountants are also transferring from the manual mechanism to the digital mechanism, as well as that, the client's expectations related to this accounting field are also transferring from the manual mechanism to the digital mechanism. Therefore, digitization is a kind of a very important topic to be discussed in this 21st century, especially during this COVID period where the digitization is a very fantastic topic. So uh, I would like to introduce the session chairman of the day, or the moderator of the technical session number two, which will be talking uh, the digitization impact on the accounting profession. So this great personality uh, is having a very good profile. Okay, it's a, it's a really big profile to read, but I will be highlighting some important aspects of uh, uh, this great personality. So this personality is the fellow member of ACCA, ACA in UK, and also a fellow member of uh, CIMA uh, and uh, the Chartered Global Management Accountant, a fellow member of uh, Certified Management Accountants of Sri Lanka, the National Management Body of the Sri Lanka National Account Management Accounting Body, an associate member of the Institute of the Bankers of Sri Lanka, IBSL, as well as that life member of Association of Professional Bankers of Sri Lanka, in addition to that, he, he was the founder member and he's the founder member of the Commonwealth Association of Accountants, as well as that he can be identified as a master's degree holder of University of Sri Java as well. So that is a very big profile to read, but uh, due to the time shortage, I will be not going to the deep of this giant personality. However, please welcome the uh, chairman or the moderator of technical session number two. He is not any other person. He is the 
chief executive officer of a ram rating company uh, mr adrian pereira fc ma so we would like to welcome you sir so you are available in the planner you know yes yes i'm here okay Okay, thank you, thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Adrian Pereira is already present in the plenary. Uh, okay, so with that note, I would like to directly move to the next part of the session. That is the beginning session, okay, or the beginning presentation of the technical session number two. So it's time to open the stage for the first speech on digitization impact uh, on the accounting profession. So who is the speaker? Yeah, the speaker of the day is FCMA Chief Executive Officer of the Informate Limited Company, which is a part of the John Keels Group, Mr. Jahan uh, Periyanagam. Jahan Periyanagam, I think I have already pronounced your name correctly. However, so I would like to Perim, give- Perimpanayagam, Perimpanayagam. Sorry, sir, Perimpanayagam. Uh, so, uh, Chief Executive Officer of the Informator Limited, John Kills Group, Mr. Jahan Perimpanayagam. So, we'll be talking about digitization impact on accounting profession. So, over to you. Shall I share my screen? Yes, sure, sir. Hope you can see my screen. Yeah, we can see, sir. Professor Bartavella, distinguished um, invitees, Adrian Pereira, ladies and gentlemen. It is an absolute privilege to talk of this topic, uh, which impacts all of our professions. Before I would start, I would like to describe my experience when I first walked into John Keel's 24 years ago. The accounting division was literally located at the back of the office. We all know the term back office. Everyone in the company was angry with the accountant. The accountant was seen as a number cruncher, someone who was a block towards progress, was always looking at the past, who didn't understand the business, and uh, I don't know whether it was a coincidence, the accountants didn't look too pleasant either. You, know, you can see the second picture, uh, messy tables, a lot of files, uh, unpleasant look on their face. This was the traditional accountant. But the accountant of the future looks something like, like this. Great personality, great communicator, someone who understands business, who is a respected business leader, who has a wide diversity of knowledge on different topics. A pleasant personality, someone who builds strong relationships. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the future accountant. So the modern accountant, if I were to describe him or her, is someone who holds holistic views of the company and the industry. Strategic awareness, not just of costs of yesteryear, but someone who understands the business strategy. Someone who looks at the future, not just the past. A master of communication and a brilliant presenter. Now, I'm very happy to see that CMA has invested in a Toastmasters club. And so many of you are spending time in developing communication skills because there was research done that this is the single most important skill that the future accountant would require. Someone who is strong in empathy and builds relationships, not something that accountants were traditionally known for someone who's curious and who is devoted to continuous learning, embraces technology. So this is the key topic for today, but I wanted to start with a slightly broader perspective of what the future accountant is and who is a champion of ethics, 
and values. So ACCA has done a lot of work in this area. They've researched, spoken to over 2,000 C-level executives, and they have compiled the seven quotients of the future accountant, someone who has intelligence, who is creative, digital skills is right up there. So that's what we are going to focus on today. Someone who has emotional intelligence, experience, vision, technical and ethical skills. Also, the modern accountant has a knowledge on ESG. I would like you all to focus a little time on this, uh, on this whole thing called environment, social governance aspect. Uh, till I immerse myself a little on this, I confess I knew very little about this area. But this is something that is going to become of critical importance uh, to the future finance professional, indeed to all professionals. Uh, because it, uh, it, it consists of the future of our planet. There is no need, you know, having the best skills, the best digital skills, if you don't have a planet. Uh, and if I could briefly touch today on this whole aspect, the Amazon rainforest, which was emitting 20% of the world's oxygen today, uh, is a net absorber. So our world is facing a climate crisis and it is up to the corporates and the finance professionals leading it. It won't help uh, our profession, if we are endorsing, if we are uh, advocating business that harms uh, the future of our planet, of our children. Uh, today, they had, a, or not a few weeks ago, uh, Iceland had its funeral uh, for uh, the first glacier lost to climate change. These are serious implications. The recent uh, 20 years had some of the hottest years ever on record. And as Greta Thunberg said, our house is on fire. So it is important as future finance professionals that we understand this. Uh, it's important not just from a social or a climate, from a business perspective. Now, uh, when working with Slascom, we realized that uh, most of the big businesses in US and Europe will not work with, with us unless we can demonstrate strong ESG credentials and processes. So something I would just want to leave with you, because this is something that increasingly we must understand and we must have an appreciation of. Diversity and inclusion. Today, if you look at some of the best performing global leaders, what is characteristic to all of these leaders is they're great at what they do and they're women. I think the world is very slow uh, to appreciate uh, the value of women in every sphere uh, as business leaders and as national leaders. Uh, and this is something that the biggest corporates uh, today in the Nordic countries, they have mandated 40% of the board positions need to be held by women. Uh, and this is something that a lot of the international bodies are very passionate about, that we have women in every level of management. And as responsible finance professionals, this is something that we should champion. Now coming to controls, as again, as finance professionals today, we are living in a very, very uncertain world. We have to suddenly move into this remote working environment. And we must not forget our roles as the custodians of the company's assets. Today, what are the threats facing your organization? What are the financial threats? What are the vulnerabilities? How do you safeguard all these laptops and assets all around the country? How do you safeguard from cyber threats? We must not forget our core role as the custodians of the assets of a company. International business, it's increasingly becoming a global village where we need to sign agreements with Company. So my company, we transact business with Australia, with Europe. We have a different set of laws coming in. Uh, we need different tax regulations, withholding tax from different parts of the world, jurisdictions when it comes to law. So as finance professionals, we need to be the custodians uh, and we need to be able to guide the leadership. So when it comes to agreements of our company, uh, we have our accountant who is an integral part of that whole decision-making process. Digitization. There is a rapid 
digitization of our profession that has been probably accelerated by the pandemic. And we must also have an awareness of shared services and the outsourcing delivery models and different delivery models that are emerging. Today, all of the leading conglomerates in Sri Lanka, John Keels, Haley's, Aitken Spence, MAS, Brandix, you name it, Laughs, Hamas, they all have shared services. You look at the large leading conglomerates in the world, they all have delivery sensors in different parts of the world, in Philippines, in India, in, in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka is bidding for this business. So it's important to understand uh, this model. If you look at my company, you know, 50% uh, of the John Keel's uh, accounting work is handled in three centers in different parts of Sri Lanka, in Mahavilaj uh, farming village, in Srinigama fishing village down south, and in Jaffna, uh, because we pioneer this concept called rural BPO. We use IT and digitization to take the work you know, to different parts of Sri Lanka and have them delivered at a lower cost uh, in a more efficient way, in a, such a manner that benefits the community and creates rural livelihoods. So these are some of the areas that we need to have a knowledge of as finance professionals. So some of the future skills required ERP systems. It's fantastic if you have the opportunity of working on SAP, uh, Oracle or JD Edwards. And once you have worked on one ERP system, you can easily translate that knowledge to the other. Uh, there are tier two uh, systems, which are also good, zero QuickBooks, uh, but it'll be really great if you get the opportunity of uh, working on SAP, particularly that's something that I worked on for 16 years. Uh, and that's a really good thing to have in your CV. Analytics and data science, becoming one of the hottest jobs anywhere in the world. They say data is the new oil. And today your companies, I'm sure, uh, have reams of data which could be used to enhance the value of the company. Today, if you look at some of the biggest companies in terms of market capitalization, they're using uh, data. It's Amazon or Google. Information security, never has there been a time when there have been so many uh, online cyber threats and vulnerabilities and it is the finance professional not just the it folk who need to safeguard the company today there is absolutely no excuse for finance professionals not to be experts on desktop skills when it comes to word powerpoint excel advanced excel all these knowledge is available to you free on youtube and so many other channels use the opportunity the pandemic has provided the enforced uh, stay at home to upgrade your skills in this. You need to have, this is baseline. Also, uh, technologies like blockchain, it's important to have an awareness. And when it comes to mindset, we need to be people who can be agile, flexible, deal with complexities of international business, of complex transactions. As I said, be lifelong students. We can't uh, go on other days when you finish CMA and then for the next 30 years you can work. You need to invest. That's why CMA is very passionate about CPD, continuous professional development. We must devote ourselves to that. A statistic I often share, if you're not reading five hours a week, you are not being responsible with your career. And it's so much easier for you today uh, than for us because you have the wealth of knowledge today at your fingertips free uh, we had to go to libraries and then get these big reference books and sign papers and get the, you don't need to do it, it's all free at your fingertips. And, uh, and this aspect of relationships. Uh, today, business works on relationships. And uh, if you can build strong relationships, strong partnerships, lifelong friendships, it becomes so much easier. Uh, and if you see the successful business folk, they have all been people who have invested uh, in relationships, in networking. Uh, really up your game on LinkedIn. That is something that uh, has really helped me and I would strongly recommend. Now coming to the area of digitization, the Oxford University study done in 2013 by Frey and Osborne says the accounting industry is one of the uh, accounting and auditing industry, is an industry ripe for automation. And some of the technologies that we need to have 
an understanding of include first robotic process automation. This is something that everyone is talking about. Uh, and now it's in fact being called intelligent automation. Uh, the bots are becoming more intelligent in being able to handle basic decision making. Uh, and uh, today in Slashcom, that's one of the key technologies. In fact, we are trying to develop Sri Lanka to be a center of excellence uh, for intelligent automation. You have companies like my own John Keels IT, uh, Potenza, Millennium IT, uh, working with international partners like UiPath to deliver a digital workforce. I was talking to MAS, uh, my um, compatriot at MAS Legato, and he was saying, uh, you know, many years ago, we have 15 uh, digital FTEs, FTEs full-time equivalent. These are not people, these are uh, bots, and they have names also for those bots. So you have a, you have a computer, the computer, you can see it working. In fact, I've invited some of the CMA colleagues, uh, Diane and a few others to see the bot at my office. And it's like a ghost working. You know, you go by in the night and you see the machine working. There's no one sitting on the machine, but the emails are being sent, documents are being opened. And uh, I spoke to someone at uh, Accenture and he was saying, you can see the empty seats now. We have earlier people working, now only the computer is working, but the work is being done. So this is huge because it's going to automate a lot of the functions such as accounts payable, already done. If you talk to Hydramanis, Shared Services, H-Connect, MAS, Legato, they have fully automated the AP process, one of the biggest functions in the finance division. Bank reconciliations automated, right? We were just discussing about automating payroll and reporting functions. Earlier, you go into SAP and then you download some reports onto Excel. You do a lot of work on Excel. We're getting a bot to do that. IoT devices, today you have smart homes, smart offices, you have devices in factory floors, devices in vehicles that can track your spend, that can track your movement of assets, of stocks. And it's important that we use uh, the right IoT devices. Artificial intelligence and learning systems. These systems are becoming smarter. Uh, and uh, people like Elon Musk are in fact worried uh, about the pace of development of uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, if you look at uh, computers that have been developed uh, for things like chess, uh, the latest machine taught itself chess in about four hours and beat the most advanced supercomputer that in turn was beating the best human. In four hours, it taught itself using machine learning and it has, in a few uh, minutes, uh, researched millions of chess games and identified and uh, memorized and taught itself the best moves. So the pace of artificial intelligence is uh, revolutionizing uh, our, our industry and indeed the medical industry, the legal industry, you have uh, IBM's Watson that can tell you the reference uh, case points. Uh, in few minutes, it can go through hundreds of years of case law and generate the relevant cases to you. This is what lawyers used to be proud of, you know, the knowledge that they had. They can quote uh, various uh, former cases. Uh, but today, Watson does it in seconds. And these systems learn. Now, if you look at some of the learning systems in our company, uh, it uses OCR, optical character recognition technology. And if a human corrects it, the next time it becomes more accurate because it has learned from that input. Big data and analytical software for fraud detection. Uh, today, big data is being used, this famous example uh, of uh, use in supermarkets, how uh, the buyer patterns are, they find links uh, and uh, they found that the people who were buying uh, diapers, babies' diapers, this is an example, were also buying beer. So they examined this uh, interesting correlation that the data showed them, and they found that this is young fathers who had babies at home, and uh, they would buy diapers, and also they were expecting a long night uh, keeping the baby up with the baby uh, waking up and crying, so they would also buy beer. So they started stocking these two items 
together. Today, if you look at John Keels, they have project Octave, uh, for the, which they're running with McKinsey, uh, the biggest big data project in the country, uh, where they're looking at trends on data for supermarkets and also for the insurance industry. They are looking at predicting who are the likely um, insurance customers where the policies may lapse. Who are your top 10 customers in the supermarkets? What are their trends? What are they buying? What are their purchasing patterns? Big data. And we are using it today for fraud analytics. Uh, within the John Keels group, there's a tool called Forest Spin. And within seconds, it generates any anomaly, any unusual transaction. It will pick it up and then raise an alert. And today is a connected world. So all our systems are connected to suppliers, we're connected to the banks, we're connected to customers. So these are some of the technologies that you need to start reading up on. So if you look at robotic process automation, the advantage it will give you, for instance, in your finance division, because it gives you a digital workforce. The bot works 24 hours. It works seven days a week. It doesn't stop, it doesn't fall sick. What it's trained to do, it will keep doing. So you don't have the problem of absenteeism and it is accurate. So once you get it right, it is accurate. Uh, and a lot of companies will embrace it because it's becoming difficult in some areas to hire and manage some of the newer generations. So uh, Sri Lanka, where we lack numbers, perhaps we could make it up as a digital workforce. Artificial intelligence. So this is some research uh, and, and the experience on a system called MindBridge. It took five minutes to audit a file and find the four mistakes that it had taken five people three weeks to uncover. So they did it in five minutes. Just look at the comparison. And it also revealed a fifth unidentified error. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is the power of AI uh, which we can use and which we must use. Uh, this is an interesting case study that appeared in the island not so long ago. Fairfast Insurance says more than a million in attempted fraud with big data analytics. So these are tools that are in use in Sri Lanka. It's not futuristic. It is here today, and we must start using it. This is a screenshot of a forest spin alert uh, that has come to me, saying there is this unusual vendor invoice that has come up. Immediately it was generated and it shows me the reason why, because there's unusual, it looks at the last three years, history of these transactions. You can see there's a particular range and in November, 2019, there was an unusual transaction. Immediately it is flagged. So for a spin users, Benford's law, Z-score, relative size factor to identify outliers. The data sets that it is used today in John Keels include purchasers, accounts payable, accounts receivable, deposits, sales, assets, and even non-financial data. It's used to detect frauds, find anomalies. And what is important about this is it's instant. So normally traditional audit happens end of a year or end of a period, you go through a sample. Here you're looking at all your transactions and within seconds and minutes. It gives you an analysis of the type of alerts, how useful these were, number of alerts that were generated, and a status of closure of each of these assets. So these are systems that are in use uh, in JKH now for uh, two, three years. So what is going to happen to our accounting profession? Does it mean that accountants will become obsolete? So if you divide our work into three tiers, the transactional, the mid-tier, and the top tier. What is really going to happen is the transactional work is going to get automated. Your AP, the GL, bank recs, the mid-tier, part of the mid-tier, management reporting, standard reporting, will also get automated. And what will remain is the strategic finance, the budgeting, risk management finance strategy. So as responsible professionals looking at the future, we need to focus our understanding, focus our learning efforts on uh, the top tier functions, even as the more transactional work gets automated. So the future of accounting 
will be that traditional activities and tasks will get replaced. Accountants are still required, but our role will change. So we must reinvent the role and master new skills. So the accountant of the future will be someone who draws insights. Right? Now, previously, it would be someone who generates the report, who generates the PNL. But today, it's the insights, the person who tells a story behind the numbers, analyzes and exercises judgment and briefs the board, briefs the CEO, the finance professional of the future will be the main advisor, the main storyteller to the CEO. And which is why so many finance professionals like Kasturi are becoming CEOs today. Displays creativity in designing solutions to complex business scenarios. Demonstrates leadership, great communication skills, empathy to effectively articulate and convince a board. So in conclusion, technologies such as Robotic process automation, artificial intelligence, and analytics are maturing, and early adopters in Sri Lanka have already emerged. So if you have not tried out your first bot, you are falling behind. And these are technologies that are becoming democratized. It need no longer be the province of just IT. It could be yourself. You know, training yourself. Some of these are free to the UI path training uh, on the basics of uh, automation is free, which you can go and do. And you can develop your small uh, homegrown bots. In fact, the vision uh, that I heard the UI path CEO articulate was a bot on every desk, like previously a PC on every desk, where each person can automate his or her own work. Shared services and BPOs in Sri Lanka are leading the way. So if you are in a shared services or you get the opportunity to work in a shared services, I encourage you to embrace that because they are early adopters of technology. Transaction processing preparation of reports will get automated. The new finance professional must be equipped with new skills, which will not be automated. Key skills include leadership, communication, creativity, judgment, digital literacy, and lifelong learning are must-haves. Data science will be one of the most highly sought after skills. I was listening to Aubrey Joachim, the first Sri Lankan president of SEMA Global, and he made a very strong statement. He said, accountants are going to become data scientists. That was his read on the future of the profession. Today, University of Kelani has a four-month program on data science. There are so many other programs. It's a very, very hot uh, profession, highly paid, uh, and very few people are in it as well. A great uh, opportunity for some of you. Thank you very much indeed. It's been a pleasure and look forward to taking the questions. Can I take it from here, uh, Ruchira? Can you hear me? Okay, you can hear me. Yeah, Pasan. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Jehan, uh, sir. So it was really, really immersive session and it was a really, really good session uh, in terms of 21st century youth people. So we got lots of things from your speech. However, so now we are moving to the most awaited part of the technical session number two, that is panel discussion, right? So this is the plenary or this is the place where we are going to have a nice productive conversation regarding the threats and opportunities of this digitalization. Some of the people argue that there are thousands and thousands of the positive sides of this uh, digitization uh, with compared to accounting profession as well as that some of the traditional people are still arguing that there are some of the bad disadvantages as well. So we are going to discuss what are these pros and cons related to the digitization process impact on the accounting profession. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to, uh, yeah, uh, first of all, I would like, 
introduce uh, introduce uh, the panelist of the day. Uh, I'm much obliged. Yeah. Sorry, sir. Okay. Hello. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome. Uh, yeah, the because it is Malvinder. I'm using. Mr. Farooq Sikder, FC MA Chairman of the ICT Committee of uh, representing ICT MA Bangladesh. Okay, this guy and personality is Mr. Farooq Sikder, FC MA. Chairman of ICT Committee, ICMA, Bangladesh. Sir, I think you are available with us. Mr. So Farooq? Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. The thank, audience thank you for can, having me. Okay. Audience can see our first personality. The second great personality that I would like to invite for this panel discussion is CMA Ashwin Kumar G. Dalwadi, Chairman of IT Committee and Cost Auditing and Assurance Standards Board representing ICA Cost from India. So, uh, Ashpit Kumar, can we have he's your... The, he's there. Yeah, I'm there. But my my right. name is Balvinder, sorry. Okay, I'm using I'm his, sorry. his link. I'm sorry, sir. So, thank you very much uh, for your attendance as well. Then I would like to invite the third personality. He's a personality from Pakistan, Mr. Arthur Salim, uh, uh, representing ICMA Pakistan. Mr. Arthur, are you with us? Yes, I, I am here with you. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. So we are really pleasure to see these three personalities from Bangladesh, India, and Pakistan. Now let me to introduce the three personalities which are who are representing Sri Lanka. So these are the representatives from Sri Lanka for this today's panel discussion. Mr. Hatim Sabri, FCA, Head of the Finance, Sunshine Healthcare, Lanka Limited. Mr. Hatim, are you with us? Yes, I'm with you. Thanks. Good evening. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hazim, representing CA Sri Lanka, I think. Right. As well as that, Ms. Chamila Kure, FCMA, General Manager, Operations, WNS, Global Service Private Limited. This is the next personality of the day. Ms. Chamila, are you with us? Yes, good evening, everyone. Okay, good evening, madam. Good evening. Really pleasure to have you with us. Okay, the last personality, not last, actually, there is another personality I will introduce later. The last personality is our speaker. Last speaker, Mr. Jehan Perimpanayagam. I think I have pronounced your name correctly this time. Mr. Jehan Perimpanayagam, CEO of Informate Limited. Okay. So, Mr. Jehan, I think you are staying with us. As well as that, I would like to uh, hand over the entire plenary for our chairman or the moderator of technical session number two, Mr. Adrian Pereira. Mr. Adrian, over to you. Adrian, one second. Adrian, I think Mr. CI is also in the panel, in the sense he's still in the panel. So I think if you want, you can get him also in the line. Mr. Siam, ICMA, ICMA president, Pakistan president. ICMA, Pakistan. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, right. Fine, I'll, I'll take a question on him. Okay, thank you, uh, Pasan. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, Sri Lankan time. So it looks like uh, listening to Jehan, my colleague Jehan's uh, presentation, this uh, digitization is a buzzword today with this COVID and all. But as you all know, this uh, digitization, distributed ledger, all those things were people were, the accountancy conferences were discussing five to eight years ago. And uh, how much was implemented is the biggest challenge we had to ask ourselves as accountants. Most of the time, it was the accountants who were the stumbling blocks when it comes to implementation of this. And we were caught off guard because of COVID. Now we are pushed to do it. We have no choice. So how many accountants prefer signing a check versus online approval, online banking? We can, if you ask a show of hands, we rather keep because all of us are partly responsible. If you say send the email, digital accounts, we want to see the audited accounts. We want physical documents. So the world has changed and COVID is not sparing anybody, irrespective country, economy, individual, company, nothing. So how, and it's going at a massive space. We don't know where it will stop. So the challenge is for accountants and for the students now, we give them some guidance there. 
I think the big challenge is for the senior members to show by example what we can do, what we should do. So the first question I would like to ask Mr. Balwinder, am I right? Right? Balwin, Mr. Balwinder, am I? One minute. No, no, I'm Ashwin. Sir. Ashwin, okay. I'm, I'm Mr. Ashwin. Ashwin Dalwadi. Yeah, okay, yeah. Mr. Ashwin, sorry. Yeah. Okay. How do you see the accountancy profession changing from a costing aspect? Now we see cost and some of the have costs have become irrelevant. Our office cost is no longer relevant. Now Jehan said, you know, bots are there, computers are there. So overhead cost is not there. And how do you see this uh, working from home? We can't ask them to come 8 to 4.30. How do you see this changing, affecting our costing and accountancy profession? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, see, let me make, uh, see, I, I'm not a professor anywhere. So I'll be speaking as a practitioner's point of view. And uh, based on my experience so far, I'll be discussing this point. See, look, what are the functions of accountants? The ac functions of accountant was basically to provide information. If you go back to many years back, the businessmen were always fumbling about the exact amount of receivables and payable as on a particular time. Okay. Because they were always asking, what, what I want to pay and what am I going, going to get money from where? But subsequently, the, this was resolved to some extent with the advent of the computers to some extent. And I remind, uh, I, I mean, I'm reminded that in 80s or say late 70s, when computers were coming into the offices, First, they were installed in the account, accountant's desk. Why? Because according to one of the uh, big businessmen, Mahindra and Mahindra's uh, current chairman, he said that my accountant is never giving me the right kind of information. Okay. And that is why if you look at it, every first computers were installed in majority cases in the accountant's uh, table or uh, for accounting, uh, computerization of accounting. Now, I'm, my foremost question is that what is the role of accountant? Role of accountant is to provide the financial position accurately, complying with all relate, relevant rules and regulations. Now in the, because now what is happening because of the computerization, which has come in a big way, it has become cheaper. Computing power has gone up like anything. So because of that, see, changes are occurring very fast. And this has led, even Corona has pushed us to go forward for this. So what is going to change for accountants? See, in case of accountants role, see, we will be there will not be any bookkeepers. Just like stenographers, once upon a time, uh, people like me who are seniors, they have seen stenographers in offices. But now this species has just, uh, it, is, it has vanished. Because in no office, you will not find any stenographer because of the computers. Because now everybody is typing his, his or her own uh, communications and letters and uh, doing work. Correct. So typewriter, typist, and stenographers have gone. So similarly, in our case, the accountants, so-called bookkeepers, have already gone. I put it this way nowadays, because there are very few accountants. And there are certain industries, there are certain industries where you won't find this kind of thing because of the presence of the computers from day one. For example, in banking industry, in uh, insurance industry and even in service cases, service uh, sector, telephony, where all transactions are rock recorded automatically with the help of the machines. So here the role is just vanishing for the bookkeepers and account, so-called accountants. 
Now, what would be the our roles? See, our roles uh, as a account uh, auditors, because accounting profession has got two dimensions. Of course, uh, earlier we have see, uh, shown compliance part also uh, as a part of four pillars. So here, what is uh, the role of the auditors was so far was to attestation of financial statements, opinion about the various compliances and risk identification, which has come in a, uh, at a later stage uh, in after 90s. Now, world is changing very fast. Connectivity has inc is increasing at a rapid speed. Processing power has also increased phenomenally. And top of it, cost is also reducing. Now, the, what will be the role, uh, new role? Because first we understand then work from home or cost would definitely come into play. So role would be, here auditor's role will also undergo a change dramatically because attestation of accounts will be taken over by the computers. Compliances, I feel that all compliances, if you feed in the system, compliance exceptions will automatically come up. So compliances part will also be taken care by the uh, computers, but attestation. See, so far, whenever we are reporting as an auditor, we always, our line, first line would be that we have verified the data on the basis of samples drawn on a sample, sample verification basis. Now, instead of that, attestation function will have to accept that they have verified the whole set of data. You cannot ask it or uh, form your opinion on the basis of this. Now, the attestation function will remain with the super specialist. Accounting and, accounting and auditing will go to the super specialist who are having knowledge of, who are having, who are tax savvy, capable to use new tools. Because of course, as I've already been told earlier, say for example, nowadays, you know, our old habits we have to change. For example, once upon a time, when we were training our child, that okay, you have to use left hand for particular thing, right hand for writing, this and that. But now look at the, uh, doctors, they have to use not only both their hands while operating, they have to use their legs also. Because on a machine, you have to work in a multi, multi equipment operations. Correct. One more thing which has already been told, expert in data analysis, critical thinking would be very important. And effective communication would be critical part for the becoming this. So whether you will be operating from home or from office, because the cost aspect has gone, but what has emerged is the, we will need, we, we will be needing multifunctional disciplinary experts. Right now also we have got chartered accountants, cost and management accountants, company secretaries in India and other uh, countries to some extent. But we will have to add one more skill, which is that expert know, uh, level knowledge of accountancy, taxation, and other business related rules. In addition to this, business acumen and technology. And it is always said that nowadays we have to learn, relearn, unlearn, and learn. So this is the process which we will have to adapt. Now, what is going to affect us psychologically? Yes, our operations, ours will go up. Of course, we will be saving on in terms of uh, what we call it, uh, transportation time. But at the same time, what is, what is going to happen? that every accountant will have to become exceptional accountants providing high value services in the areas of fraud detection, compliance, data analytics, and technology and strategic guidance to the businesses. 
so the question is whether you are going to work from office or home but your profile is going to change you will not be a chartered accountant cpa or cma you will have to carry burden of multidisciplinary activities with a exceptional skill for communications so these are my views on this thank you thank you uh, thank you ashwin uh, mr salim you are there hello mr salim you are there you are muted sorry can you hear me now yeah yeah i can hear you right okay good Okay. uh salim now taking from uh, ashwin's one now this uh, auditing profession you know changed with uh, covid and it's no longer possible to check your books of account unless you send it email no vouchers right so and we were talking about cloud computing distributed ledger it's not there when accountants when it comes to char all accountants we don't know where that distribution is we know only our where our files are right so but we need more it guys because recently i met a audit firm uh, international audit firm now they were struggling with a set of accounts from with a client so they hired they got a actually an intern he is a boy from a foreign university it degree because he is doing so when you he when he went out they found out that the system they were struggling was 15 years old system this is the multinational that was they were trying to get it so we need more it guys we don't need audit trainees who are pitons we are paying we need more it guys who are a little bit more expensive right we can't take and who may not have some qualification so uh, there's a cost factor how, how do you see the accountancy profession moving from there now we no longer need audit trainees we need it guys so they are the ones who know how to break into this <laughs> right edwin uh, this is the dilemma that every uh, profession is uh, going through because uh, it is changing or the ai is changing each and every profession whether they are doctors where whether they are lawyers whether it's accounting uh, and it's not about you know uh, there was uh, a saying jack of all trades master of none that none has changed now with master of one now you have to be jack of all trades an accountant without uh, it knowledge is is someone which is not accepted by the industry and an accountant needs to be a it person because we all use uh, smartphones we all use uh, uh, different gadgets and uh, uh, internet of things is going to get into our houses so how these it procedures work how this automation works and how we are going to customize it this is going to be part of everyone's life so we are not going to be accountants anymore we are going to be semi uh, it guys we will not be professionals but we are, we will be the people who are going to design new reports customized reports we are going to be telling uh, what ai should do in future like uh once i met a uh, animator he was a very good 3d animator and i asked him uh, how, how is your profession he says he said that it was very challenging because people don't understand that we are the animators they think we are the creators we want ideas from people and then we can create something we can do animation for them but people come to us with the, with the, with the thought that uh, these animators are going to do the creativity by themselves so this is the limitation what it guys will face it guys you can't say to an it guy uh, guy that uh, analyzes data he can safeguard your data he can pick up your data he can um, give you the data whenever you need it but the analysis has to be done by you the analysis has to come from the accountant and as the ashwin said it is all about business acumen in the future so what we need to develop is not understanding of debit or credit it's not about whether the voucher has the proper invoice with it or not 
we have to go go beyond that the auditor has to go beyond that because with automation all the debit entries debit credit will tally and there will be some audit trail electron electronically available and that electronic trail will not be verified by the accountant or the human that uh, tra uh, trail will be verified by the artificial intelligence uh, intelligent software himself it will give you a report that out of 10000 transactions 8000 are perfectly fine 1000 are doubtful and these three needs their attention so you have the analysis you have to look beyond that so i think accountants will be needed it guys will be there to help us but accountants will need some it skills we we, we need to know what how to choose big data, how to analyze big data, what is Power BI. So these skills we need to develop. And when we develop these skills, these will help us not only in auditing, but also in business decision making. So this is the skill that every accountant needs, whether he is an auditor, he is a forensic auditor, financial auditor, he is a management accountant, or whoever he is. So, uh, uh, this is uh, my take on your question. And uh, mm, lastly, what I would uh, like to add is that uh, that on the student side, uh, the, our students need to understand this, that uh, currently the mostly the accounting bodies are giving you technical skills from the business, but the analytical skills you need to develop not from your books, but you need to get uh, general knowledge, you need to get business knowledge, you need to get uh, industry specific, specific knowledge, and you, and you need to understand how businessmen exploit business opportunities. When you open up your mind, you, when you get this knowledge, only then uh, you will be able to succeed in your profession. Thank you, uh, Salim. Okay, Mr. Sid Sidda, am I correct? Have I pronounced you correctly? Okay, thank you. Sidda, right. okay. This uh, working from home is the, I guess, the new order, new world order. So no longer is this 8 to 4.30 uh, applicable, right? We have no control of costing, we have no control of back office, right? And the staff, right? And uh, we have HR department that comes with the age-old model of vision, mission, working from home, all those things. Not working from home, sorry. Uh, you have to sit in your work. You have to put your thumbprint when you're coming. So you are the president of the ICMB, uh, Cost and Management Account of Bangladesh. So how, how do you try to, and we can't retain talent also. Uh, the, 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 the good guys are the ones that who go, not the, we are left with, the other fellows are, we are left with. How do you try to, bridge this gap. Now, we have organization that we have no control of the people, the talented people in an organization. We have a set of rules, we have a set of policies. So how do you try it as an as a institute? What is your view that you should take to how to bridge this gap for the industry? Um, I mean that uh, um, retain accounting challenge uh, in our industry. Yes, accounting now has a non-accounting aspect of how do there are a lot of other issues now coming in, like the IT, the HR side. Okay, but I you mean the overalls, how do you retain talent? That's the yes. question is. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, um this is basically an IT is not that new. It is started as long back when as we know that, but it's long way to long way it's come right now. So development is there. And last couple of years, we have what I've seen in the pandemic that uh, we have to force to go to the homes and home office. Uh, this is the new culture has impacted uh, all of us. All of us, uh, we have seen that. And uh, there is the nine, uh, 95 jobs like that. So we have to work on our uh, flexible way, flexible way we're working right now. This is evidence. And this is uh, definitely going to uh, much more far, uh, down the line, of course, the same. Uh, time frames, the open time frame will be, be there. And uh, the impact, I think that industry will not be affected as much of this uh, time frame changes. 
because you see that uh, people are liking it to working at home because uh, if you want to go office from here, yeah, maybe you have to prepare for one hour's time and uh, come back to the home, then you're gonna uh, take much more time as well. So people are liking to working at home from the office. The challenge uh, is challenge in this aspects uh, for the timing aspects, I think that uh, I, didn't, I didn't say any, any problem because in other countries what I have seen in the articles or other things that uh, this is very much more acceptable way to people are, are working from home is a very much acceptable way. And they're accepting is I think if, if there is another aspect, if you think that uh, the technology part, if you say that IT skill, uh, then that is a question of uh, different that whether IT, IT will take our, uh, our accounting job on others. That might be a question also, right? Yes. Okay, in the uh, technology aspect, what I've seen that there's a transformation is coming. What in my career, I have done some manuals, bank reconciliation, as we all of our senior job, all the here, accountant here, know the same things. And uh, but in in what happened last 20 years, what I've seen that there's an automation of bank reconciliation, the accounting software or the ERP software. We can import the bank statements and is doing the automation automatically. So, and this can happen also in, I have seen, but we have seen that AP and AP ledger sizing or inventory ledger sizing and other things, or might even go further like that integrations work, the HRs or the payroll part is integrated with our ERP or accounting software, but to our transactional pass automatically. This is a development already in the current, current uh, the students or what we are seeing right now. And this is digital digestion already accepted, accepted by us. And we are doing very much comfort on, on this uh, right now, but further we have also seen that there was a, a changes in um, from on-premise system to the cloud-based system. So this is another changes already came in in in, in our you know, all, all around the walls. And also this is this uh, in pandemics the cloud-based accounting or any other works that is going to also be became very popular. So we can do work from our homes to doing the same work for all our transactions we can do we can take the reports everything we're doing this is also changed already already is there and the new changes also coming up uh, that that have to cope up you know that ai or data analytics this is the technology which is not much widely uh, adapted by all of the countries maybe the western country or some of our, our asian countries i don't think that if it affected all all us right now in especially in the bangladesh but the things is that uh, the, the future accounting, what I've seen that, that uh, there have to be more, um, uh, more, more, more learning, uh, learning, they have to more learn on uh, database management, data analytics, and these are the things, or, uh, or they might have to learn also in maybe the other blockchain technology, what I've seen right now. So that have to be learned by the power of new generation accountant. Otherwise, they're not gonna go. What I've seen the last um, one of the reports uh, published by the, World Economic Forum that um, in 2025, uh, there'll be changes is our provision. 93 million jobs will be new included. And almost, I think that 87 million jobs will be decreased. And, and uh, in the accounting provision side, what I have seen the accounting cloud or transactional data, and uh, uh, data bookkeepers, and these are the jobs will be go away. It will be taken over the bots, the robots will be taken away. But in, on other part, the what we're going to account into, what are the, our professional accountant will going to do? They have to look at it, but I've seen that. So in coming days, there is a lot of channels. People have to work on, on revenue generations. Accountant have to run strategic issues. And then you have to think, you have to drive revenue, drive growth, and, and try for reducing the expenses, even the plannings and other things. These are the things, key areas they have to be worked on, on the strategic way. So uh, this, is, this is one aspect. And, and the, you know, the professional designation will also be changed and will be the, um, will be there rather than not as the CFO, rather will be the uh, CFO and chief data officer, finance business partners and everything. What I'm seeing there, and then it comes the lines, an accountant profession in the office may be disrupted by the technology and they're gonna work like an advisor, consultant kind of work. And project-based work will be much more, is, it will be affected or will be implemented on the later stage. What could, could be down the time, maybe 10 years later, 
the people may not be hired the people for the auditing accounting or that they are going to outsource all the work by the accounting. This is a major challenge. Changes is coming up. For the student part, what I've seen that what what going to do them? What what we did our study period? Why do we that? We have to learn our technical knowledge or in the communication knowledge. We have to go to the schools and learn physically. But then nowadays, the information is everywhere. So what a student is going to do that? Already they know that how to learn the things and information is very much available. And uh, only thing is they have to uh, creative ideas. Ideas have to be built in. You know the presentation. What we are seeing then right now, PowerPoint presentation, it will, uh, it will be much more visualized. They have to learn some other skill as well. So uh, it's not it's a visual effect also be there in our presentation of our data. So these are the things uh, people, our future accountant, have to learn much more. They have to be more creative, more thinking, all the way they have to learn. And this is a collaborative space that the gaining the knowledge will also be another prospect. So we're not gonna gain knowledge from our, for the internet, rather than we have to uh, form our peers, uh, seminars, training. These are the way we have to build our continuous knowledge, profession we have to keep, keep online all the way. I think this, this is the way we can cope up our crisis in the, to take um, talent pools in our industry. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sridhar. Thank you very much. Uh, Shamila, are you there? Okay. I am can I... Ah, okay. Uh, Shamila, you are from the BPO industry. I think uh, it, which has been growing, and we have been uh, very Sri Lanka has been very bullish on that one. Uh, you are not on the screen anyway. Can you? Okay. I am on. Okay. 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 Right. Okay. Uh, now this work, um, those days when I used to come to, once I have, twice I have come to WNS, it's like going into the defense ministry, right? <laughs> you need all the clearance in the world, right? You need your ID, you can't take your phone, right? Correct. All Correct. security aspect. Now mm -hmm. this work from home, governance, your security controls have gone, I don't know, it has gone through the window, I guess, right? And... Uh, and the whole world is going through, not only us, I mean, I know the whole world is going through these kind of changes, even the big. So how do you see whether our boards to control to, how do you see this is, this is a very big issue now, right? Buildings have become irrelevant, controls, the, we, asked, we had an issue of putting the ID card in the door, now I, nobody's there in the door. Tell me, how do you handle it? Yeah, so first of all, uh, thank you uh, for having me on this panel discussion and Jehan, wonderful, uh, you know, keynote. Um, I think you covered most of uh, our industry related matters. So thank you very much for bringing that up. Um, Adrian, uh, I, I do agree with you. You know, when, when we were in, in office within that four walls, um, there were a lot of security controls because our industry um, know me as such. We are working with um, information and data of uh, clients who are outside of uh, Sri Lanka. And we do have a very strict uh, regulations uh, which we have to follow through like GDPR uh, and so on. Uh, to ensure that the data is being protected and we, we maintain 100% integrity of the information. So we have taken as much as possible physical security measures when it physically in office and also uh, infosec um, uh, measurements uh, to ensure how do we protect the data inside the office. You are true. We don't even allow people to take a mobile phone inside. Uh, if you've gone into our floors, you'd have seen there are a lot of uh, you know lockers outside where we get the people to keep their mobile anchor. We don't even get them to get it inside, right? But um, working from home um, condition actually changed the whole scenario of how uh, we looked into that physical security and infosec uh, measurements. Because you have to, you you really don't have choice. You know, you, if you are to get the work done, you have to move, you have to transition to a different set of environment which enables you to deliver your outcome. So the, the transition was actually easier um, for us being BPM company 
because we are anyway on a on a uh, network we were anyway on the technology so it's a matter of what we had in office to be transitioned to home along with the devices but back end that brought into a lot of uh, discussions and understanding between our clients also uh, for them to appreciate the fact that you know you can't be expecting 100% security at times because at home what happens it's it's very difficult for you to control over because you can't be expecting everybody to have a camera in front of you and start working it is not practical so i think uh, what pandemic brought into the discussion was that everybody appreciating the fact that uh, there is a, a amount of a flexibility that we need to bring into the table there needs to be certain understanding between the parties how do we collaborate and i think most importantly uh, the measurements that we brought into uh, in terms of how do you tighten the security controls over um, the network that you are working um bringing in uh, more cyber security controls and allowing certain physical measurement now for example you know we've given devices we've given pcs laptops but you know we our devices have been locked where you can't uh, include a pen drive or any other device to store data and we don't allow uh, any of our um, employee to download data into uh, their desktops it's a client environment so you can only really allow to uh, download data into a client environment so there are certain physical and infosec uh, measurements that we brought into um, and also i think it's 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 all about a discipline and a attitude uh, that whole world has brought into the picture after the pandemic and uh, you know i do agree there had been certain increase in the cyber attack Uh, but that also have given a improvement as to how we looked into the security measurements. Um, but from a human point of view, I think everybody has come into an agreement and understanding that this is the way forward and this is the new normal. And the benefits of working from home is being realized. Um, you know, uh, for for us. uh for example our efficiencies our productivities have increased um phenomenal ways uh, when compared to uh working from office because you know in office you been stick on to a particular working hours here we have given them the flexibility uh for them to work whenever they can uh what we looked into is end of the day whether you have met the deliverables that you are supposed to be meeting on that particular day so that flexibility has brought in a lot of conversation lot of understanding lot of uh, willingness uh, from the teams uh, to deliver more because that has given personal life balances to them in into a greater extent and also i wanted to highlight the fact that um, you know how do you measure the productivity of of your workforce how do you train them Uh, into use of new technologies new security measurements um also would play a huge role uh in in adapting to the new norm of working from home and i would say it's it's not necessarily working from home anymore it's working from anywhere right we ourselves have been experienced you know when we were even driving when we were even traveling we get into official uh, meetings so it's it's working from anywhere and um, i think it's 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 the way forward um, and as accountants what we have to i mean as as accounting professionals what we have to uh, look into is that you know we are being prone to uh, being fixed onto a framework um, we, we don't get into that flexibility we don't understand we don't appreciate the uh the other functions uh, we we are basically technically uh, very well equipped with uh, our accounting aspects but what uh, this has brought into the picture is that your skill set your competencies cannot be limited into a particular functionality it has to go across 
you need to be appreciative of other function. Uh, may not be, you know, you can be an expert in IT, but to a great extent, you need to understand uh, IT, HR, um, uh, supply chain, for that matter. Uh, it's a collaboration end of the day. Uh, and I think uh, we all have to get used to this new norm uh, in adapting to even on accounting professions. Thank I hope you, I Jamila. answered the idea. Yeah, I think somewhat you answered. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, Jamila. Hatim, you're there. Yeah, okay. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I do. Yeah, okay, right. Now you are in the industry, Hatim. Now, uh, from an accountant's point of view, right? Can our prof accountants adapt, right, to come out with a sustainable business solution, right? You know, we our business model, like Chamila said, most of the things, all of them things have changed. We are not online now. We are working now. Some of the people are attending meetings while they're on the run, probably attending two meetings simultaneously, right? So do you need, do you think our accountants need to be reskilled and uh, and how fast if so? You think it has to, and what are the th things that you require from a business perspective? Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, yes, before going to the question, Adrian, uh, I would like to, I think, uh, acknowledge a very uh, insightful presentation by Jahan uh, in terms of his keynote address, which captured uh, a lot of the key pertinent uh, areas regarding this change in terms of digitalization, uh, what it has meant for industries across our profession, especially, and uh, what as accountants we need to do uh, in terms of becoming that future accountant that he portrayed, uh, the different portions and the different types of skills. So again, uh, that's that's what I think your question also deals with, especially from an industry perspective and from a business accounting perspective. So I think uh, business models are changing. All of us know how uh, business models have evolved. We know of the famous examples of Airbnb, Uber, all of this, how they have become the biggest, you know, real estate, uh, the the you know tourism or holiday, uh, you know, home providers without owning any real estate, how they have become the largest, you know companies without owning any physical assets, basically. So just before going to your uh, question of the business models and the skills, just to quote uh, something that I just read. Uh, in October 2020, there was a survey done by Gartner of 173 CFOs, uh, and it brought out five uh, very key uh, facts regarding what is happening with digitalization, digitalization and uh, what it means to finance professionals. The very first point it says that was that automation will no longer be debated. So I think that's a very strong uh, statement and a very pertinent one to note that nobody is hereafter going to be able to question automation or whether it's beneficial or whether an organization needs to go down that road of adopting, you know, RPA to blockchain to AI. So there is no question about it is what these CFOs say. And I think we all, uh, you know, uh, subscribe to that view. The next thing is like what uh, Chamila mentioned as uh, well. Uh, remote working will be the new norm for most finance professionals. So again, uh, something to deal with. And I think we have already heard regarding what that brings, what that means to the table, how businesses should adopt to that. Upskilling will be the new norm. So they are again relearning, unlearning, relearning, and upskilling in terms of the different skill sets that we talked about. Uh, data analytics, data visualization, that's a whole new area now that's developing. So I think these skills in big data, in uh, RPA, in uh, automation skills, these are the new skills. And those updating your skills to these, updating our finance professional skills in these areas is a new norm. There is no choice, basically. Data will be the, the fourth point is that data will be the key to success. So like what was already mentioned, even by Jehan and some of the other speakers, it's like the data is the new oil. Data is like, you know, you have data like a stream flowing behind your, uh, you know, home. And companies that can make use of this data in useful, insightful ways to compete and, you know, uh, position themselves uh, differently or, uh, you know, uh, identify their core competencies in a different way to their competitors using this data are the ones who will succeed. 
they are the ones who will be uh, one step ahead and the final point in this survey was uh, that erm enterprise risk management and this uh, whole uh, idea of all this whole concept of managing risk from a business perspective will be on the you know primarily the one of the primary responsibilities of the finance function and the finance team so i think this uh, kind of you know puts in perspective what we as finance professionals should do to adapt to these business models and bring bringing solutions so i don't think there's a question of whether we can bring solutions or we should bring solutions as finance teams to these changing business models of course yes we have to bring and uh, it means that we need to look at all these areas that we just talked about so we need the finance professionals to adapt to these new technologies so in terms of adopting to all these new technologies this buzzwords we hear about you know Uh, blockchain rpa big data analytics adopting to all of this again is no it's not a choice we have i think in bringing these solutions the business solutions uh, to these business models uh, it's like how we i would like to just take you back to probably you know a couple of centuries ago where how how communication and how accounting evolved we all know how communication evolved it started with snail mail it started with you know physical mail it started with uh, you know letters it started with then it started with the electronic you know mobile and the email and now we have communication all over we have it on our fingertips at any given moment and similarly accounting how did it start with lookup passio it started with these double entries and then you have these huge ledgers then came you know the calculating machines the calculators the uh, the initial versions of what we know as excel today lotus 1 2 3 Uh, excel and now we have come to you know many other platforms we have bi power bi tableau we have dashboards that are you know transmit data or make uh, our boards informed of company performance as at when it as and when it happens boards or uh, senior management don't need to uh, be waiting for month ends to get reports you know through email now you have online uh, you know uh, updated dashboards being made available to their mobile devices uh, you know in uh, real time Uh, which from which they can go down to the most you know detailed level in terms of where are their next sale is happening or which territory is not giving enough sales or where the numbers are really picking up so finance teams need to be aware of all these they need to be the people uh, basically the business partners so in terms of bringing these solutions to make these models sustainable finance has to be the business partner they need to understand all of these areas they need to understand the impact of technology the impact of data because technology today is what will help finance to understand the data there is so much of data out there the volume of data is exponentially growing every day every month every week as we speak so finance needs to be able to and this and the technologies will only help us to analyze and understand and interpret this data in a way that will bring an advantage that's how companies will have to understand where their competitive advantage lies so they, this these technologies and data will help to understand uh, these aspects of the business and how the business should be run and then this data the finance professionals will need to be the people who interpret this data like a previous panelist said we will have all the it support all the it you know technologies giving out all those insights but interpreting them and convincing the board or advising the board on the what business strategies need to be pursued is what the finance professionals will have to do in the future so the business solutions they bring will have to uh, be based on their ability to use these technologies and their ability to understand erp systems connectivity all of this is also going to be very important and in this uh, we know now uh, another role that the finance uh, you know teams or finance professionals need to play is we know how transactions have become complex over the years earlier when you go to buy something you can only pay through cash or maybe you know you go on credit but now you have so many different mechanisms of paying for a transaction we all know we can you know cash is the least used we have credit cards online purchases we have bitcoins cryptocurrency to everything you can think of in terms of business models so we have to adapt to all of these areas and finance needs not that finance needs to be experts but in terms they need to know how these work 
and how these technologies can help their businesses, their processes, their business models uh, in terms of making their businesses succeed, their businesses be sustainable and uh, you know grow and uh, in the in the competitive market. So I think uh, the businesses that do adopt these technologies, the professionals who do adopt these technologies and these who upgrade themselves, who upskill themselves early, are the ones who are going to stand out and be able to succeed. So uh, even, uh, for example, even, and the other thing what I want to say is now, even these automation tools, the, the tools that we so-called uh, you know, know of RPA to AI, they are actually now being put out as tools that need to be used by business users rather than the technology professionals. RPA you- tools, for example, uh, need to be used by uh, finance professionals. So I think the finance professionals uh, need to, I mean, they have a task to uh, bring out these business solutions and make their businesses sustainable using the technology that's out there and uh, using it to the best advantage of the business. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Haidar. Jehan, are you there? Jehan? Yes, I am. Uh, Jehan, I'm going to put you to the hot seat, Jehan. Now, uh, I know Slascom and uh, Sri Lanka has been very even uh, Chamila is there, uh, very bullish on this BPO market. Am I right? But right. now today you said you have desks without people, only computers, bot or something, right? Now, why can't tomorrow America put that bot there? Why do you need to put it here? Now, why, where is this BPO market going to be? Now, that fellow is, you have a computer sitting there, no people. So what is going to be the future when this, they put the computers in front of people? Now, where, where is it? Absolutely. That's a spot on. I mean, that is something that my company, uh, Slashcom, we are all discussing uh, because uh, rather than sending the work now, because the reason people do it is for lower cost, right? As well as access to talent. Now, if they can do the same thing uh, with a bot, it could be even uh, done at a lower cost in their own backyard. So then, so we have discussed that. uh, So that the BPO industry has also got to evolve. So we must realize that the uh, traditional type of outsourcing work, you know, data input, uh, that has a short lifespan. That's not going to last us for uh, may, uh, too long. So we have to upskill. We have to get into more knowledge intensive services. And that is what we need to position now. Uh, because if we stick with the low end, uh, as you what you rightly said, will definitely happen. Uh, it is already happening. In fact, my company, we have lost work uh, to exactly what you said. You know, earlier we had uh, one resource doing it here. Now that has been automated. They don't need the person. They're very happy with uh, what we are doing. So we have to then move into new services and we are expanding our range of services. Uh, and uh, not only my company, every company today, uh, they are basically, and we ourselves are disrupting our own work. We are, our industry now, we are going to our customers and saying, we can automate it for you. Right. Uh, and uh, as a result, my billing on this service will go down, but I can do something more for you, which will help your business. So we are we want to be one step ahead. We want to disrupt ourselves and offer higher value, add, more value, more knowledge, advisory services uh, to our customers. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, Adrian, if I may add. Yeah. Can I add? Yes, yeah, sure, um, go ahead. So as Jehan correctly said, I think um, the, the success of the industry, BPM industry, is um, how efficient you are in providing the service because uh, the, the profitability of the organization will be based on the productivity that you could achieve. You know, having more people, you know, is a cost for you, but, um, you know, more that you bring the number down, uh, your profitability will have an impact. So the industry itself is evolving through technologies. How do we make this better? So as uh, Jahan correctly said, we are always one step ahead of the market. So the challenge for the, you know, the so-called Americas or UKs or other countries would be, they are not in that one step ahead yet. Probably they will catch up, but um, in terms of the talent and, and that exposure that we as an organization, as an industry has, give a lot of economies for us to do it because we do it as a service for many organizations. 
not just one organization. So even if one company in US wanted to do it, it'll be costlier for them rather than they're getting it through uh, a ITBPM company. So those are the advantages that I think the industry has, as uh, you know, Jahan correctly said, we need to evolve um, uh, constantly um, unless we, they'll catch us. But I'm pretty sure I myself has experienced how we have uh, progressed so far. Uh, so that's something that I think as accountant, prof accounting professionals, also what we need to catch up on uh, in terms of our skill set and competence. Thank you, Chamila. Uh, Pasan, oh, I think we have hit the time limit 540. Uh, so, Pasan, I'm handing over to you. Ruchira? Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you, Adrian. Thank yeah. you, Adrian. Yeah. Okay, over to you. Unspotted. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Adrian Pereira. So, it was a really, really uh, wonderful session. There were lots of new ideas coming on. Uh, to this stage. So as I mentioned earlier, as the youth in this uh, Sri Lanka, there are lots of things for us to learn, okay? So this is a massive opportunity for CMA students or CMA past finalists and CMA membership uh, uh, to take uh, different, different things from the different, different uh, personalities, okay? So however, this was a really good session. Thank you very much for all the panelists for committing their time and uh, putting their time uh, for this wonderful session, especially uh, Mr. Adrian Pereira, uh, the chairman or the moderator of the panel discussion. Thank you very much, you, sir. And all the panelists, I would like to respect you all. Thank you very much. And so we will be winding up the session for today and we will be meeting tomorrow as well. I think, as if I'm not mistaken, we will be meeting tomorrow at 9 a.m. for the day two. Okay, CMA Sri Lanka International Student Conference is a wonderful platform for uh, CMA students as well as other uh, interested parties to develop their knowledge. So don't miss tomorrow for sure. So we'll meet tomorrow at 9 a.m. sharply by 9 a.m. through the Zoom uh, platform. Until that, bye see you. Take care. Stay safe at home these days. Thank you very much. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Adrian. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Ah, thank you, Pravinda. Bye. Thanks, Chamila. Thank you, Jehan. Excellent thank presentation. You, ah, very thank good. You, ah, thanks, thank uh, Jamila, and all our panelists. Okay. Thank you. So, thank you. Thank you. Tomorrow, thank you. Ah, we have to ah, take care for tomorrow. I hope ah, if you all have time, you all can join. Okay. Thank yes, you. Of course. Thank, thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. All the best. All the best. Thank thanks, Jehan. Bye. Right. Right. Okay.